for June 20th, 2018. The first item on the agenda is a notice of intent for the Bosque property on 2 and 10 Shore, Lakeshore Drive. It's a continuation of the notice of intent. Good evening, Phil Cheney here uh, on behalf of David Little and for the Boskies. Uh, we've done some plan revisions, which you've received. I think we've addressed uh, the issues that were brought up at the last hearing. So I think we should be in good shape. Kind of run down what my understanding was and with David's uh, notes here. Uh, one of the first things we did was tighten up the limit of work on the west side uh, so we can uh, minimize the disturbance a little bit over on that side. We have reconfigured the deck so that the stairs, uh, the landing, uh, remains in the same place, but the stairs go off in the opposite direction towards the street now instead of towards the water. So that'll cut down on the amount of uh, disturbance towards the 50-foot uh, the buffer. Uh, in addition, we're showing on the plan now, on David's plan, the 55-foot to the uh, the posts on the deck. This is the second story deck. So we've got the five foot buffer uh, to the no disturb zone uh, for the posts. We've also eliminated uh, 204 square feet of the wooden walkways on the, uh, on the original lot uh, two and three. And we're replacing them with some natural stone stepping stones in the lawn uh, so we've actually, uh, the 184 square feet expansion of the platform there, and now we're now taking out 204 square feet of wooden walkways to try to mitigate for that existence. So now we've got more than a two to one mitigation uh, throughout the, the two properties for the work being done. I think that may cover it. Thank you. Comments, Amy? Just a couple. Um, thank you for going back to your applicant and working with them about the, the plantings. I think the new plan will um, offer much better infiltration and protection to Seymour Pond um, as having more a full vegetated buffer strip sure. there. So that was great. Um, the coverages incorporated both sites, so it was a little hard to say what was attributed most, you know, what was attributed one to the other. Mm -hmm. So building coverage increase of 803 square feet and site coverage increase of 1,711 um, with a new mitigation of 2,775. Um, so it's ballpark with the mitigation with requirement um, of two to one. And then my the only, um, I'm just looking at my notes here. The only thing I can say is the commission at the time granted, did grant the walkway and granted a smaller platform. So, and this platform is <coughs> substantially larger. It is pretty much right at the edge of, of the wetland there, um, whereas the majority of the path is kind of in a lawn area. And you say they're still going to have stepping stones and whatnot for access. So, unfortunately, I, I I, I'm still recommending that the platform size be the original size and that they still get to keep the walkway. But in the grand scheme of things, it, looking at the entire project, is that a deal breaker for me either way? No. I think okay. um, the vegetated buffer strip brings this, this project into compliance with our um, regulations. This is in the 50 to 100. Um, not in the zero to 50. Our regulations state that we may require an additional buffer strip. It doesn't necessarily say we have to. Um, it doesn't say a specific size. That's something that we're actually going to hopefully clean up. Um, I got the revised regulations tonight ready to go for later um, because we want to make those clear for applicants. Um, but I think as we, we don't um, preclude building in the 50 to 100 as long as there's adequate um, mitigation, if you will, and I think it does meet the other performance standards. Um, so with minor discussion maybe about walkways and stuff like that, I would recommend approval. If I can just throw in one thing particular about the, uh, the boardwalk area. Uh, when I was there a week ago uh, on site, just checking a location of some things, I counted four minimum uh, snakes 
living underneath that platform, oh, wow. as well as a rabbit. Okay. Okay, so because okay. the fact that it's sitting on the ground, it's actually serving as, I've never okay. seen that many, that many okay. snakes on a property like that. There were two, two uh, the black racers yep. and two northern water snakes. Wow. And uh, I was like, wow. So it's, I would kind of look at it like, we've actually got some real habitat there, and that, that kind of might push me to thinking that it's really worthwhile. <coughs> Well, that's up to, to you folks. I can see both mm -hmm. both ways to it, so. All right, thanks, Amy. Let's go around the table. Do you want to start, Mark? Any comments? Sure. Um, I'm actually pretty comfortable with it. I like the way the plan was presented. I like the, uh, I like the modifications, and I think it serves the purpose well. Uh, the steppers, I would much rather see that than the, the walk, the location, um, the platform. I'm good either way. I really don't mind the... Uh, the size and shape that it is right now. That doesn't concern me so much. Uh, I'm good. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I'm happy to see some uh, plantings on the, I guess that's the lawn area of the other property there. Um, I'm still, uh, I would like to hear what the other members think of um, counting uh, this as mitigation, what's on an undisturbed uh, natural area um, that's being counted. And it's, I'm not really sure what the feeling is on that. Um, Does the plan allow us to separate the two approaches? You know, there is some plantings on lawn. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, yeah, the whole right. other property is mm -hmm. yep. moving. I, I mean, I think I did look closer at the area in question there, and it's very thinly vegetated. Mm -hmm. It's really, I mean, there's some parts of it a little bit thicker, but there's really not much. I would say this, I don't know what the disturbance was mm -hmm. in, the, the, in the long past, but it's... it's yeah, there is yeah, evidence really of disturbance. Yeah. It really does need some revegetating. I really felt that. Right. And, and just a general thought to the existing lawn. Uh, when I first looked at it primarily from the other property, it looked awfully green. And I came and saw that it's a beautiful clover green. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, it's, most of it's about 50% clover. And, uh, and some of the shadier parts are probably about 20% moss. So it's clearly not an intensively cultivated lawn. It's pretty much be a good showcase for Cape Cod lawn for the type that we're trying to Do you think that would be uh, amenable to that being in the order of conditions that it... Um Remains it? Oh, lawn sure. Yeah, I've, I've, they've been maintaining that for a while, and they're comfortable yeah, with it. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah. That's not a problem. <clears throat> and that would be um, essentially no pesticide, herbicide, yeah. or fertilizer yeah, use no would be the restriction. Yeah. Which makes sense on Seymour Pond, which is oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. an impaired pond. So. It's, it's <clears throat> clear they're not putting anything down now. That's I was good. surprised. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I have no questions. This looks good. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Yeah, my only concern was the um, additional lawn area, but I think you've addressed that. If, mm -hmm. if we put a restriction in with no fertilization at all on and this And no property. new irrigation on this piece. <clears throat> there is, I think, a few heads on the other piece. I didn't observe any, did but you? it's okay. very possible. I All didn't right. see any. But def not on yeah. the new one. Yeah, we did see the heads. We did? Heads yeah. there, so right by the walkway, there I was one or I two. Know. but I didn't ask the client, and I didn't look yeah. at it when I was out there. But that's fine. Yeah, so long as those two restrictions are there, then <coughs> fine. With no problem on that. Thank you. Any comments? Questions. Nope. Carol, okay, any questions? Is Five feet of this deck now cancel that Yes. Yep. I would like to have seen the whole deck pulled back. I realize it's not touching the ground, but it still is a shadow. Yes, it is. It is on the south side, though, and so the sun is going to penetrate well below that. So uh, I can see that being mostly vegetated. And you did propose some shrubs there. Mm, yes, I've got shrubs along the southern end, but even. It's going to get morning sun and afternoon sun all around. It's going to be very, very bright. It's a very high deck. Let's say the, it's a second floor deck, and with the elevation, you know, set up a little bit higher. It's it's a couple feet higher than that. I, I still would have liked to have seen mm. that. Um, what what is a 
proposed drip dispersal soil you want me to do it? Thank you. <laughs> you said my, my engineer runs away. And no, that's there. okay. It's a um, type of low flow sub, uh, leach, leach area, essentially. Um, they have, they're fairly close to groundwater here <coughs> um, with their new septic. So it's, um, it's a low flow, very close to the top. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Want me to tell you? Go ahead. Sorry, this is John yeah. Schneibel with Coastal. So it's, a trip, it, it, it's like drip irrigation, so it's... Similar to like like the irrigation line that you see for uh, for lawns, similar to that, has perforated holes in it. <coughs> basically, has a timer. Right. Yeah, and the time goes. And, and it, usually, typically, they only they pump out about eight ounces every you know every time that it runs. Mm -hmm. And it all, it's half an inch. Yeah. Yeah, half an inch to be. Right. That's what it is essentially. Thank you. So, and does that, that have a field? Mm -hmm. That. that the field is within this rectangle. Yes. Yes. It will not. The, the, the tubing runs like, like this. I should run. I could run. Is my the tubing is on the edge of this rectangle? No, it runs through the. It runs back through. and forth. Runs yep. Go back yeah. and forth. Kind of like a clothesline. Yeah. It's not in priority habitat. There's not. It is in a zone two, so I mean they are restricted for bedrooms, which we need, which that's why we have one bedroom. But if there's not more restrictions. I I don't feel we can put on it. Yeah. Other than what we've talked about. No other Thank you. I, I've got a couple. Um, so like Carolyn, I'm, I'm not really thrilled with a vegetated buffer strip. I realize most people are okay with it, but to me it's not really what the, the regulations are asking for. Um, what's, you, you've got a row of five bushes there, right, mm -hmm. under the deck essentially. Yes. What's going to happen moving to, I guess, the east from there along the 50-foot line? Is there any, uh, what type of plantings will occur there? It's all going to be just, you know, seeded with fescues. Okay. Can well, and that's it within your limit of work area. Outside that, it's just going to stay right, natural. Right, right, right. So, so it's just where we're can we up the can we extend those plantings to go east for uh, another similar length um, along that fifty foot line there? Yeah, another twenty feet, like another four or so. Or we had the, we'll say you got yeah. fi you got five. Yeah, yeah, I've got five. You probably only need. Yeah. Can you add five more along that line? You know, the idea of a vegetative buffer strip is to reduce human activity yep. on yep. that edge. And mm -hmm. um, so by having those bushes there, that might reduce mm -hmm. the tendency to continue to use that or develop that, um, have it Sure, I, I, don't see a, I don't see a problem with that. Okay. Yeah. I, I ju it just occurred to me to, uh, to make the note that we eliminated the four-foot access path that we were looking for on that property as well. Yep. Right. Okay. And then I guess I got some questions in the history of the platform because um, I think I understand. Yeah, I think I understand that it's not, it wasn't done by the present owners. That's I, what I understand. Do we, do we know, know when the platform went in? It, it, is the it order, old order of conditions has a certificate of compliance. At the time of certificate of compliance, I have an as built plan that shows, which that was almost 10 years ago, that as built plan. Um, that shows the plat that shows it being the size it was supposed to be. So it's sometime within the last ten years right. that the new one was put in. Mm -hmm. And this owner, I think, has only owned it for about a year or so. I don't know. Um, so I don't. I can't say it. This looks like it's more than a year old um, out there, but we don't. I can't be sure. Yeah. If it was the same owner, it would be a, a violation. It would want to find and. and yeah. And bring it back. Isn't this a problem that your attorney should pick up when you're going through your... They had a certificate of compliance. They had nothing on the deed. They had no restriction on the deed. But upon looking at site plans, it might, you know, they should should look at site plans too. Um, okay, a couple of other examples recently. Um, the Bay Area Housing Authority, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would like to see it 
um, brought back and, and, and plant that area, extend the plantings over. Um, I'm not sure how the members feel about that being um, a problem. Seeing how the present owner probably didn't do that, but it's um, it's an awful big platform right on the top of that. that what, bank. what was the original permitted to? What's the difference? Ten by sixteen, and this one is sixteen by thirty-two or something like that. Yeah, it's huge. So it's that's double, double basically. Yeah. Size. Something along those <coughs> lines. I, I know the original was 10 by 16. So that, that's that's my preference. Um, the preference would be to go back to the original size. Yeah, yeah, and, and plant and plant that, and plant the area. Um, I don't feel like we gained a lot with that vegetative buffer strip. Um, and I I really wish I knew more about the history. I, I hate to punish an owner that probably had nothing to do with that but that's a, a really large platform that would never be permitted um, any time in the last 10 years it, it was just built that way so and you're willing to displace the snakes they, yeah that, that's not natural snake habitat they just you know I don't think they'd be there without it oh they, you'd be surprised where they'd live they, they like they make their own holes and mm -hmm. they they live a lot of different places um, you can still have a platform, it's going to be smaller. Yeah, I think that's... <coughs> but that's up to the Do community. you want to take that back to the to the owner and see if he's if I mean, how the, he feels about that? Is that, is that truly the, the sticking point? I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm hearing that all throughout. <coughs> I, would, I would prefer to see the back to original. <coughs> yeah, it's not like it was done... 25 years ago it was so you've got uh, three three at least about mm -hmm. six john doesn't john mm -hmm. can't vote mm -hmm. i don't know so it's uh, I, I don't know I, he didn't do it so, yeah. you know I, i'm fine if we left it mm -hmm. yeah i mm -hmm. i guess i'll need to uh can you well so we can move on is mm -hmm. there a way that we can it. Approve it minus that, and and take this up as a change in plan, in the in the future, or a men or I'm slight amendment okay to get that. this moving. I'm um, okay with that. I'm also okay with looking at where the existing pilings are, and so you're not just cutting it back to where it right. was permitted, but cut it where it makes sense. Where it makes sense to mm -hmm. cut it. Um, are you sure there are even pilings underneath it? Well, it might be four, might be four, four by fours, or may I even, I, I'm. I don't know. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's footings or not. It may just be, yeah, it may yeah. just be sitting on, on a gravel base. If we take a vote and approve this plan with the uh, return of the platform to the original size, yep. What if the owners do not agree with that? They can appeal it. I'm just saying maybe it's worth. Vote it. I mean, this is a small part of the project. It's kind of a part that's in violation. Maybe I mean, you could approve. Maybe you could vote minus that, and then we can address that separately. Mm -hmm. Since it is yeah. still, it's a violation, but yeah. it's an old violation. I mean, we do have some more boardwalk. Boardwalk we could eliminate too, if that would make a difference. Up towards, you know, within the 50 towards the house. There's one section still left. Understood. But still. But still, we're eliminating more square footage than the additional deck. Mm -hmm. That's, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just so want to make that clear that we're we're already taking out, we're reducing the square footage of total decking in the zero to fifty by more than the increased size of the deck, and we can eliminate another, uh, another probably another hundred feet or so. Yeah, that's gr well that's grassy the area. Mm -hmm. I think the um, mm -hmm. that this buffer right in the pond mm -hmm. is, is quite valuable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm interested in seeing yep. that come back to where it was supposed to be. I mean, 32 by 16 mm -hmm. is a big platform. Um, simply wouldn't be permitted mm -hmm. by any mm -hmm. measure presently. Mm -hmm. And what was the original? 10, 10, by 10 by 16. 10 by 16. Mm -hmm. And maybe you keep it 16 by 16 or just so that you don't have to cut it all to pieces. Um, 
there might be something there mm -hmm. you could do. But 16 by 32 is huge. That, that's a pretty big violation, even though it wasn't the present owners. Mm -hmm. The game said it was 10 by 32 at the last meeting. Is it about twice double the size of it? Is it 10 by 32 or? Yeah, that's uh, 16. 16. 16 by 32 yeah. is what it is now. It was permitted to be 10 by 16. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Hold on. That's oh, my, wait, let me measure two. Violation. I could be misspeaking. I apologize if I am. Scale 20? 20 scale. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it is 11. 10. Yeah, it's 11 by 32, 10 by yeah. 32. Okay. 11 by 32. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be 10 by 16, so it's yeah. about double. So maybe it's keep it 11 so you don't cut it all up and go 11 by 16. Okay. Would you like us to make a motion to that effect, or would you rather bring this back to the, the owner? Uh, keep that separate for the now? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to see how that would work is if, if my client really objects. Uh, right. That's why I need help. come back right. as an amendment um, to keep it. Okay. So, that's still, so there's still options available to them. Well, what I would recommend is because nobody wants to be, you don't, you don't want to probably go through an appeal for a, a, sure. a platform, right. and neither do we. Yep. So if we approve the project yeah. minus... It was always a decision on the deck, and then you take it back to your client. You can come back as a change in plan. Okay. Or, or an amendment or something like that. But you can get the rest of the thing going. See, I favor voting with it out. That's what I Okay, prefer. that's fine. Yeah, your, you, your purview. Yeah, unless you would rather uh -huh. take it back. Uh. I guess I'm not seeing an alternatives from your from your uh, standpoint. No, that's that's not going to help uh, right now. Uh, hmm. I would say as long as we have, hmm, well, we still have the ability to, to amend it in some way. Mm -hmm. As far as the actual like proportion, size, location. So we're not right. dictating that. There's always the ability to request an amendment. Right. Right. I think, um, yeah, we'd want to be practical about mm -hmm. cutting it, you know, mm -hmm. and if there was, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, going 10 well, by in, 16 versus 11 mm -hmm. by 16. It's in sections. I, mm -hmm. I'll show you. So it wouldn't be too hard to separate, I don't think. Well, can we put it in a new way? I don't care. Here, just keep it active. It's, if you zoom in, it's in three sections already. enlarge in it you can see oh, that yeah. it's in actually three sections yeah. mm -hmm. yeah so 10 years ago our bylaws you know had that cover as something that shouldn't yeah. happen you shouldn't mm -hmm. so yeah yeah oh three yeah. i think was the 50 foot no disturbed so yeah this was after that so i well. my preference is to the motion to have it restored to the original size with um, consideration for the construction to um, have a practical footprint and, and we can okay why don't we go with it why don't we go with it at that point and that we we can we can uh, return with a plan to, right. to amend it if there's some, close some issues. Practical to the sure. Well you're also if you vote tonight and that's the motion you're not closing the hearing tonight you clo we don't close the hearing until we do actually do the orders yes. so we're not Closing it to discussion. Okay. It potentially, could be a small amount of discussion next week if okay. the chairman agrees to that. All right. After you talk to your client. Sure. Okay. All right. That that helps. That works then. Okay. Thank you. So we've got um, a little extension of the plantings next to the deck. We've got the reduction in the platform. Any other conditions we want to talk about at this point, or had the uh, the, the chemicals and yeah. uh, on neither <coughs> and the no irrigation. Other than temporary above ground drip for the native plantings um, on the new lot or the 
It will soon be part the, of the, the whole um, thing. So the, the law and restriction would be on the whole property? Yes. Yeah. For the chemicals, right. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a shot at a motion. I, <coughs> I, move, I move that we approve the plans presented for 2 and 10 Lakeshore Drive with the conditions to extend the plantings adjacent to the jack deck to include five additional shrubs um, and then to include the, the condition to restore the platform to its original permitted size as close as possible to the 10 by 16, or close as practical, and then to include a, an order, a condition to have no use of herbicides, pesticides, or fertilizers in the complete zero to 50 zone. Right? The, the, uh, the one thing where the deck is removed, that would be replanted. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. the deck, you'd have the, the plantings would be extended where the deck was removed. Mm -hmm. Did you want the no chemicals in the hundred? That's mm -hmm. the whole property, right? Yeah, yeah. well, that's you said for the property, and you said 50 foot. Uh, well, we can't for go fertilizers. Be, oh, I know I said 100. No, you said, you said 50. I said 50? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a mistake. You know, I, I would 100. Want, okay. okay. Yeah, right on Seymour Pond. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you for catching that. Is there a second? I second it. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Next to the agenda, we have a notice of consent for nine fiddlers landing, dwelling modification, deck replacement, with patio, and other site improvements. I'm John Sch For the record, I'm John Schneivel, Coastal Engineering. Uh, here with me is Rob McPhee um, from McPhee Builders. I'll just quickly go through. Hopefully you've been to the site. You see we've staked it out. We flagged the, the boundaries. We flagged uh, the proposed new patio and uh, the mitigation area we had proposed. So hopefully you saw that. Um, <clears throat> So I'll start with what existing conditions at the site. Um, you know, right now it's, it's a residential area. You know, nice homes all throughout here. Um, it's a serve, It's a single-family home served by Town Water. Has a sewage disposal system that's in the front of the property, um, and um, has why we're here. We have got a bunch of resource areas. Obviously, we've got land land subject to coastal storm flowage. This is in an A zone, this property. Um, there's a coastal bank that runs right here, runs along the um, property right here, and then runs along that timber bulkhead, and then um, out to the other side. And then the coastal bank, again, the actual landform continues uh, beyond it to the north. Um, <clears throat> again, we have a salt marsh right in here, and then we got land under ocean. We got mean high water that essentially um, is up against the right here where the edge of the salt marsh and then is kind of forced right at the uh, at the uh, timber bulkhead and with the property there is a, uh, a pier has a little landing and has uh, you know where the boats right here so um, also there is a <coughs> presently there's a, a deck right here where we're proposing the patio there's a stone dust area that I show in pink this area right in here um, and uh, has a driveway and has uh, various walkways. What we're proposing <coughs> is number one, the, the major part of the work is actually uh, is basically within the footprint. It's actually going to remove the second floor and then um, and Rob can talk more about that and then and kind of reconfigure the, uh, the actual uh, roof lines. Um, and what we're doing within the 50 and the 100 zone is we're actually kind of modifying the driveway, uh, making it a little more ornamental, uh, redoing the actual walkways, 
and that will actually, um, from the zero to 50, there's actually an increase of uh, impervious material about 500 square feet or so. Um, <clears throat> Lastly, again, this, this, we are taking, we're removing this deck and putting this, uh, proposing the patio. With that, we also, um, we've included removing this stone dust area and making that, I know there's an, uh, possibly an issue with this being not considered a hardscape, but we're looking to remove that area and consider it in, in, in actually uh, meeting the, from the zero to 50 that will have equal areas uh, for removal and and um, uh, existing, excuse me, and proposed. Um, also, we're also providing uh, some mitigation in this area right here, about 983 square feet, really in the zero to 50. And um, what we're also with the, with the new patio, we're gonna keep the distance the same. We're actually, you know, from, from what the deck is, and that's about 15 feet from the um, actual, um, Coastal Bank. Um, the stone dust area, if we remove it, it's about three feet from the Coastal Bank. So that's, <clears throat> so I think that's a, it's a positive thing to do that. Um, <coughs> and we also, oh, I forgot to mention, also they would do, we're looking to propose to put a, um, a uh, roof over the landing here that leads down to the, um, to the pier. So I think that essentially is the project. Um, Glad to answer any questions. I don't know if Rob wants to bring up anything now on the on the building, or we want to. If you can ask us questions, we'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Uh, if, if not, I think Amy's got some comments for us. Rob, are you all set for now? Yeah. If you have any questions on the building, I'm happy to answer them. But I Thank think the you. plans probably show yep. for the most part. Thank you. Um, I actually have no comments or no issue or questions about the the building aspect of it of, about the house. Um, the front entryway, it is in the 50 to 100, but it is in the front of the house out near the road. Yes. Um, the uh, more extensive brickwork, um, I don't really have any questions about that. And you, um, We can talk a little bit about location of mitigation and, and whatnot. Um, most of my comments, are, I talked to you about them yesterday, John, um, yes. were in regards to the increase of hardscape in the um, fifth, zero to 50 foot buffer. And um, on one hand, it's where they're proposing a larger terrace area. It is currently lawn, so there is a reduction in lawn area. Um, but I still, when you look at the, at, at the numbers, we have no disturbed zone, so no new structure. I don't see the, you call it stone dust, it's mm. pea stone kind of um, <coughs> area. It's pretty pervious. It's very informal. I don't even know if it was ever permitted to begin with. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I kind of don't view that as the same thing as a proposed hardscape patio with has a mm -hmm. fire pit and it has um, as it, when you say bluestone do you mean bluestone dust like hardening yeah. or is it going to be pervious for, for what the patio the terrace the patio it's gonna be um, yeah, as I understand it, it's gonna be I understand it as blue stones, blue stones. yeah blue stones uh, blue. dry laid dry laid blue, yeah. blue stones Okay. Just view that as, as, you know, be concerned a little bit about runoff with that one. Um, it is a very large area. We're also proposing an outdoor shower. No, there is one there. Yeah. It's a rinse area, not a shower. Okay. It's actually yeah. in the back of the rinse. garage. Oh, that's back an of the RA. <coughs> RA. Is it um, currently closed off or is it just a thing? Um, it, on it the is, side of the house. It is closed off. Okay. Yeah, it has a fence. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Well, we when we re there's nothing well, because we had to take it off to shingle the. Building. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that where the black paper it's, is? It's where the uh, yes, exactly. And there's actually, okay. if you look, there's a trellis or a lattice, if you would, on a couple of posts with ivy or, or, or vines yeah. growing all over it. That was the outside of the shower, but the other walls were removed to do the reshingling of it. Okay. But the but the vi the vines, if you have that picture on the back of the house, I didn't bring a picture with me, but. It was the other um, day. Well, it was like last week when I took yeah. the pictures. It is where that black paper is. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have pictures, you know, we could provide. If I didn't take one from that angle, of course. Of the, uh, of it all before anything was ever touched. Okay. 
well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we have pictures of it all, which okay. is, you know, knowing that where it is and yeah, what it is. And that's good. We left the vines on the uh, um, lattice there. I, me personally, my interpretation of the regulations, um, you know, the terrace is much more of a structure than that P-stone area there, so I don't see it as equal to kind of switch, trade those off. Um, I would recommend in the zero to 50 that we kind of stay to the same footprint of structure. And um, and then I would like, in, is as opposed to where the proposed revegetation is, um, mitigation plantings are going, that's fairly naturally vegetated right now. Um, it is a mix of Virginia Grass creeper. No. Poison ivy and a few <laughs> other things and some invasives, um, but I would be a little bit more interested in um, reduction of actively irrigated um, fertilized lawn area a little bit closer to where the dock is. Um, even if you did have terraces up top, I think you could get some low growing shrubs that wouldn't impede your view potentially down there. Um, but yeah, those essentially, I see a little bit of an increase in square footage in the zero to 50. And um, I'd like to talk about the, the mitigation area. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Do you, Sheila, why don't you start with your comments? And oh, okay. Amy, <coughs> do you have an opinion on the roof over the landing? Um, I was, I, somebody else on when we went to the site had more of an opinion on that, so I was going to leave it to that person. Okay. But it's um, we we the my only thing is is um, the currently approved dock that's on site. Yeah. It is somewhat pervious. Um, so any runoff from this roof structure, I mean, the roof's not going to be pervious, so it would run off. It is a small roof structure, but infiltration would still be important, I think, to the commission. But I know somebody else had comments on that, so I was going to leave Does it Does it cover person. lawn? Or what, what will it, it cover? It proposed, it covers wooden, um, a landing for mm -hmm. the dock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should. Show it in the yeah. orange right here. And yep. that is yep. permitted. Yep. We, we checked right. the yep. dock to make sure everything as, as is shown on site was correct, and it is. Right. Okay. Okay, my other question on this. Around this proposed patio, you have a proposed wall, retaining wall. Um, and does it go, uh, as far as I'm looking at this, all the way around? Well, there's, there's the <coughs> right here, there's a yeah, short wall here. Here, yeah, these two areas right here, yeah, and then and then this steps down to this area, and then you can step down, down to the grass. So the picture of this on, the, on this page yep. with the uh, picnic area and the new cover grill was. Um, yeah, these. Okay. That wall? Okay. This is. <coughs> This is <coughs> okay, looking at this. You know, just to, if if I could just yeah. inject real quick too, as far as this plan you're looking at here, it wasn't as much intended for site work as right. it was to show sure. you the elevation. And the only yeah. reason why you got this one with the floor plan portion is if I recall on the left side there, John, is yeah. there a there's, a, there's one side elevation of the house, and mm -hmm. that's really yeah. the only intent of that plan for you yeah. is because of that one side elevation on the far left side. Yeah. Um, we, we've been constantly updating this yeah. this patio and, and and trying to get it to kind of meet your regulations. Um, and so, we again, we looked at that and said, okay, if we include the stone dust area, then we kind of were right at, at, the, at your number that you're looking for, you know, no, no net increase. So that's what we were looking at, and this is this plan probably was done before we got into. You know, again, it's it, it, it was it was it was done yeah. way before way, way before this. But, okay. <clears throat> we this just was, want. Yeah. But you are. I mean, the, to her question, I think it's you're proposing some sort of stone retaining wall. Yeah. yeah. For the terrace. For the right. terrace. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Probably so you can st you can sit on it. Sure. You know, okay. A couple of feet. Yeah. So. I'm not quite sure why you have that one floor plan in your application, I to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the one that, 
we, we more gave that to you again for the give it for the elevations and then the you know this kind of the floor plan not really to do with the, the, the patio and, and the only so you don't want a wall no if I could if I could just ask to focus your site review on the site plan that plan. John has developed and right. the landscape plan and not on the architectural plans for the floor plan of the house those those I consider a wall a structure in the zero to 50. And, and if we look at the site plan that John has, so, we should focus on that for our for our yeah. plans, and not the floor plan of the house. Yeah. If, if we could, I'm not I'm not sure because what happened was the floor plan of the house has been a work in progress for a while. John, the Walshus, and the landscape architect have been working back and forth with feedback from Amy early on on um, on yard work, wall, patio, terrace. But that I think what she's referring to is on the patio. There's a wall on the patio. That's correct, and it's on John's plan. It's on this plan right here, and it's, it's some for you to sit, you know, sit on. So it'd be similar, like maybe this, this Is that height. What you're referring yeah. to? Oh. Proposed wall. Proposed wall. Proposed yeah. wall. And so yeah. that is the only wall that would be. Right, this wall right here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so, it, so the, it's more of a for you to sit on, you know. So. Okay, so it has nothing to do with putting a grill in the refrigerator, fridge, and you're not no. going to do that. No. No. You're not going to ask no. for permission. To no, no, no. It's a short. It's a short wall that's helping to hold that patio area up, so you have nice views from your patio, and then there'll be a couple of stairs down, I believe, in your yep. plan. Yep. Yep. Down here, yeah, right. and then stairs here, correct? Right, and then the wall acts as a container for people when they're out there not to fall off the terrace, rather than a, a railing. Yep. It's a way to contain people on it. How high is this terrace? Uh, it's uh. One riser, it's probably similar to the deck, deck. Right there now. It's one step down from the first floor of the house, which is what that deck is. And, and when they purchased this house and going back through conservation, I believe, and, and building, I think there was a patio where this deck used to be. And then there was a permit for a deck to go over it. Thank you. Thoughts? Um, um, so I was the one that was concerned about putting a roof over the, mm -hmm. the landing right now. I, I, I don't think I could um, look on that favorably just because you're changing a what I would consider a permeable structure so the water can go through the deck that's there now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would consider that an entirely different type of structure in the 50s. Um, so uh, that's my first comment. Um, right now, there's a tree at the end, at the northern end of the house, on the corner where you have a proposed garden area. Is that coming out? It wasn't marked for removal. Um, the northwest. So it's right here. Right, right by the bulkhead. By, by the, uh, uh, the, bulk the bulkhead. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a U. I think it's yeah. You know, as far as I know, it's going to stay. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you, when you say proposed garden area, then what do you? Yeah, the, contemplating. They, again, they're just going to be, you know, pl plants essentially. They're, they're going to. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not. not you're not it, growing tomatoes there or something no, like because that no, tree wouldn't. No. Wouldn't be. And this is a summer home for them, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, the proposed trellis on the southeast corner of the yes. house, if I have yeah. that right. Again, mm -hmm. I think that would be considered a structure in the 50. Um, a new structure in the 50. Are they, you proposing to have fences on each side of that? Um, actually have s sort of plant uh, it's kind of a little bit of a privet right there I think mm. on each side yeah. yeah to kind instead of um, instead of a fence yeah okay. oh, and the trellis is really a I mean it's a garden you, you see them all over as a garden feature there's no roof to it it's no. yeah, it's sure. slats and daylight comes yeah. through and yeah yeah all right um, and then to uh, to Carolyn's point too so so the this the site plan does not have a an outdoor kitchen on it, so that's not contemplated on. No, correct. No outdoor kitchen. All right. Uh, there's one or two other. Oh, what is the current base that's for the uh, rinse area? What was there previously? Uh, it is. It's brick. 
Yeah, I thought it was just brick. brick. It's where it's, the walkway yeah. is, if you're... Right, there's brick. a brick walkway. It's brick. So now you're going to have teak in a locking shower floor over a brick edge flagstone? We would actually like to remove the brick, yeah. put stone for drainage. P-stone. And contain P-stone yeah. to contain yeah. it. Yeah, and then on top, put, put sleepers and, yeah. and decking. Okay. So you stand and the water rinses between the decking into the stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. On, and maybe it's just my looking at your notes on this, and I'm sorry, I'm still going to look I know, at this. it's so confusing, and I apologize. Yeah. It was, uh, you have a Lynx Trash Recycle Center. <laughs> this thing. Is that just a dumpster you're going to use for building purposes? Or what? It's on the first page, right up on the top. I don't know if I even have that one on the uh, on the uh, second floor. Yeah, and that's on your this is what happens when we get architecturals. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, again, they're they're in progress, and and I'm you know this kidding. is an out of state architectural firm, so I'm joking. So I know. I know. <laughs> All right, we're looking so at we're, um, whereabouts. If you find the we're patio, up. and they're yeah. right above the flag, the uh, off of the patio, above the umbrella, it says Lynx Trash Recycle Center. Uh, nothing. Disregard that. We crossed that right out. I uh, know it. Yeah. Oh. Good pick yeah. up. That's a yeah. good pick up. Yeah. I, I just didn't watch they're putting recycling. The <laughs> <laughs> no. They're also proposing the links trail and the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, these are older plans. Okay. Un unfortunately, yeah. this. Focus on and I apologize. Footprint. Yeah. The, the the first floor plan here shouldn't have made its way into the application it just added confusion obviously yeah, yeah. And in the second floor plan the only reason why it was even included was it shows the left elevation of the house that's the only thing that would be beneficial for you if you were right. curious what the outside looked like it just is that one elevation yeah. but you know other than that it's just a second floor um they're still playing with a uh you know lay interior modifications at home when you're architect and then we're Fair enough. We're picking yeah. up the scraps and putting it all together here locally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I echo Amy's comments about the uh, area that you have for proposed mitigation planning, that it is already naturalized. Um, and I don't see that putting the bulk, if not all, of the mitigation in there would really be that beneficial mm -hmm. for, for our purposes anyhow. So that's all that I have. Brad. Thank you. Well, I had a concern that you were going to put an outside kitchen in. Yeah, no. But that's no. not the case, no. right? And um, what Ernie said about the roof on that structure at the dock, yeah. were you looking for a full roof or more of a pergola type thing? They had talked about a roof for shade, but I, I, I mean, a pergola, I think, in my opinion, would satisfy the same concept for shade. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. If it was a roof, I, you know, my yeah. question I was going to ask the board was, you know, how would you feel about I would Some go along with the pergola. Would you go along yeah. with the pergola? Yeah. 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 Well, Since it's an existing right. deck there now. And a roof also potentially could lend itself in to be more closed in in the future and whatnot, and a pergola less so. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we could do. Those were the two questions, not questions, but comments. That I All right. Uh, no comments for now. <clears throat> I would agree that the uh, the open frame over the landing would be the way to go. And uh, I do have some thoughts about the patio, where you've got a seating wall around the perimeter. Looking at the elevation, as I saw today, it looks to me like there's going to be two steps before you get to the landing down there at the entrance. And you've got about 1,300 square feet with that wall all the way around there. That's going to direct all the water right down that stairway. So it's going to be just like a waterfall. Maybe you want to think about some provision to trap the water on the perimeter inside the patio and let it leach back into some crushed stone under the patio mm -hmm. just to deter it. Great. Okay. Yeah, could look at, we could look at that and look at a, maybe even a dry well or some, uh, some down at the end of the yeah. Yeah. <coughs> container. Yeah, container that water. We can do that. Yeah, a way to, mm -hmm. a way to catch it. Yeah, right. I sure. Think, I think there's two steps now off the deck, if I recall correctly. Come from the house down to the deck. Is one riser. And I think you're going to have two more. Two so more you're from the deck down to the ground. Yeah. Two more risers. I'm thinking you're 24 inches or so. Yeah. And that grade drops off on that end right. significantly. Right. Um, as far as looking for space <coughs> for uh, mitigation, looked to me like from the uh, outside of the landing in front of the uh, bulkhead on either side, there's some open spot right there for some low growth that might be an option. 
on either side of the landing, landing you know, yeah, going right to the dock. Right, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yep. 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 Mitigation in terms of rem removal of currently really highly cultivated lawn yeah. would be well, something to talk about. I'll bring it up now. Okay. The anyway. Just Let's see what their feedback is. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. It, it sounds like we have a series of uh, modifications. Yeah. So does it make sense to uh, itemize them? Well, uh, the other thing that we were, you know, discussing was, you know, I, I know you're having a problem issue with the stone dust area and so forth. So we looked at, well, and I and talked with a client, is maybe actually adding a five-foot buffer mm -hmm. along the coastal bank and then run, run along the whole, you whole know, top. whole thing and then, you know, both sides of the timber bulkhead and then back up to the coastal bank. Mm -hmm. That would be about, I figured out the area, about 670 square feet. Um, you know, we still would like to have the comp whole patio as part of that. You know, in other words, we're removing quite an area. Actually, from the zero to 50, we're, you know, basically we're removing the first five feet, you know, 10%, you know, of, the, uh, of that area. And then we'd also then, you know, provide still some mitigation, some plantings in that, that little triangle. So you'd end up with about um, 1,650 square feet of, of mitigation, you know, plantings. You know, in this area, and if you include all this, mm -hmm. and that's a removal of lawn, mm -hmm. and then we'd also then get rid of the stone dust area too. So okay. if we, that's what I, types of uh, plantings did you did you think that ahead yet or no? We we again yeah we so have the ideas of small to medium small right. natives. Yes. Yeah, something that wouldn't affect <coughs> the view as right. time goes we on. We don't want people to have to come back for pruning. Right. So for pruning. Right. You yep. could, we could there's plenty of natives. So I know that was an idea I was throwing out that I thought would maybe allow us to have that patio the way it is, and then we'd again provide a lot of l mm -hmm. lawn removal, removal of that little stone dust area, and then provide <coughs> um, you know some native plantings here. Uh, we could even, if you want, we could get a landscape architect you know to give us an idea you know of what kind of plantings they put in there, and if you, subject to Amy's approval, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, if the commission were to enter something like this I'm I don't think it's not a small enough area I don't think you need to hire somebody okay. I'm happy to work with you okay all right it's a nice site improvement yes. I, the, the big question is um, keeping the patio without subtracting the square footage from the stone dust area um, that would be an increase in the zero to 50 yeah. right well they're keeping this they're gonna yeah. get rid of the stone stone area. then we'd get rid of that too so that would but in the present calculations, that's considered a straight. It is considered part of part hardscape, essentially. On 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 our yeah. On your on ours, and then we we broke it down that way, you right. know, as far as and we did put down the, the specific area for the um, for the stone dust, you know, and it's about 267 <laughs> square feet, and we actually then if we counted that, it was about an eight foot decrease in actual uh, what we considered hardscape. Right. So if you make that adjustment, then. Your patio will be 259 square feet less. It would have to be if to meet your net in. Okay, so you'd be reducing the patio to that, that amount. We would have to, yeah. And okay. and, and then, see, that's why I'm thinking we could, you know, again, add add this for mitigation around the. And, and keep the patio. And keep the patio the, the, the size it proposed. is now yeah, as proposed. And then the stone dust area would, you know, go away too. Be lawn, yeah. yeah, be lawn. So. Right. Yeah. How do people feel about that? That's uh, it, it's a site improvement. It, it's an improvement of the existing plants. It's still an increase in the zero to fifty. Um, so I, but I, I'm not sure I see the benefit of a lawn over what the stone dust is now. I think the stone dust drains nicely, mm -hmm. and, and the lawn. So I would like that stone dust area to be removed from consideration. So we, so we leave it there. Uh, yeah, we no. We've a, we've asked that they'll be removed from the work. calculations. So it's going to be removed from the calculations, from the calculations. And, and that makes sense. But if if they want to remove the stone dust, I think that's fine. Um, I just don't think it should be counted as square footage decrease relative to hardscape. And so the question of the commission is: Do we want to accept keeping the patio the way it is, which is an increase in zero to fifty? Okay, mm -hmm. square feet. How much would it be? Two fifty. Two two fifty. About two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and I understand the commission. Well, I, I was yeah, but two fifty, and you're already. I mean, you're contemplating a hundred and eighty-four square foot decrease. So one two fifty versus or minus the one eighty-four is about seventy square feet. Sure. Yeah. Right. 
the uh, the lawn is the, is mm -hmm. in those calculations too for some reason. Yeah. Uh, well, and I and I understand the commission's you know the the, the concern of you know no increase in any anything in the zero to fifty, but then sometimes you have to look beyond the the black and white intent. Right. Of that, and, and overall, in the big picture, is it the benefit to the to the, to the resource area, to the town, yeah. with the other site improvements for <clears> consideration? <throat> you know, taking out that section of grass and getting getting nice plantings in there. Plant. We all know how everyone feels about grass. Well, the alternative would just be to pull back the addition on the patio by the 80 square feet, which wouldn't be a whole lot. No, right. You right. Can, you no. Can right if you no. get to a net zero, I, th right. I don't think we'd have any concerns at all. I think I think we're moving in the right direction. Would you like to make these modifications to the plants and come back? Well, here, here's here's the question that I, you, you talked about 80 square feet. Uh, yeah, where can you? Yeah, that, that, where that's where I'm. Is? Yeah, where's well, that coming? From? I was. <laughs> that's that's what I'm. Where are you looking at? Right Ernie. now, including the stone and gravel, you have a 184 square foot decrease yep. in coverage. So if we take that that's, uh, out of the equation. That's primarily from lawn, though. It shouldn't be in the lawn, calculations. Right, that's so total lawn and impervious, yes. <coughs> but lawn shouldn't be in those calculations. I, I did so. not include lawn yeah. when I did my review and my yeah. site summaries for but, you. But if you look in the in the dark shaded area yeah. just, a, just above that, we again, we went through and you can see how we, it, it's actually, if you included the 267 square feet for the stone dust area, so eight uh, it, it, it means eight, eight square feet decrease, so it's actually 250, 259. So in other words, it's the difference. Yeah. It's the difference. So the patio yes. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 So <clears throat> again, so that's a, that's a two, lot. 259. Yeah. Increase. Right. It would be correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's a lot. So that would be a lot on your patio. Patio. Yeah. But, square feet. But again, we're. Proposing, are we, how much grass were you proposing with native plants going back in place? Well, yeah, we're moving, um, let's see, I do this side. Uh, taking out basically 670 square feet of lawn and putting in plantings. And again, and it's, it's in that zero to five. It's that first piece, yeah. you know, and then again, you're, <clears throat> you're not going to have people again. It'll kind of direct them away from the, the coastal <laughs> bank, one, number two. Um, the um, yeah, but see, you the won't problem, have the problem we have is is generally we will only allow an increase in zero to fifty if it's a hardship. Yeah, that's not the case here. Yeah. So you know the two hundred and fifty nine really is is just a pure increase, and any mitigation won't cure that so long as there's no hardship to warrant it. You can hardship is something to consider. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just letting On the way that the regulations read. You can. Grant a variance if the end product is environmentally better than what you started with. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way you can do it. Yeah. Um, I'm still not sure if the mitigation, so we haven't done it yet, but we've been consistent. Um, hopefully, tonight we will, with our, our regulations, get to the mitigation ratio requirements. Mm -hmm. um, we've been consistently applying it, though. Um, if there was an increase in the 0 to 50, that has to be 3 to 1. An increase in the 50 to 100 is two to one, so um, I think you're close. But yeah, you'd well, have to there, there may be look. some other areas over in here that we right. could look at. To uh, how, how about the lawn? Uh, the lawn in general. What's the plan for the lawn? Is it going to continue to be a lawn chemicals and fertilizer? Fertilizer. <laughs> My guess is yes. Uh, it's a beautiful they, lawn, you know. Yeah, um, it looks like it'll get, you know. I mean, it's been Sig there since day one. Significantly disturbed through construction anyway. Um, yeah. Might be possible to convert it. Um, well, I mean, yeah. again, if we're looking for a three to one in that zero to 50, we could maybe look at areas, you know, this area that we talked about, the five foot buffer strip, and then maybe an area over in here, uh, maybe we can get that three to one. Uh, 670, it's 259. So we've got to be basically 750, you know, yep. something like that. So we're close on that. Yep. So we could. I, I would say make those modifications and come back. Okay. Um, I think seeing the numbers adjusted is pretty important. Yep. Um, seeing the new mitigation proposal is important. Yep. Um, you're hearing that people aren't really favoring the roof over the uh, landing. Yeah, we can change that. Pergola, 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 pergola now. Like that. Yeah. Right. yeah, we like, yeah. Anything else we want to see modified or see better information? How does everyone else feel about the trellis? Is that the, the trellis is, I, I, I don't know. Could that be something? 
that seems like it's a structure. Yeah. Could that be something, I mean, if they're looking to break up the front yard from the backyard, there is, I mean, right at the 50 where the garage is, would they consider maybe <coughs> moving that to the 50-foot line instead of having it right at the back of the house? Move it, move it. Move yeah. The trellis so to the, to the 50? Yeah. Well, well, we, it, since we have to make edits, we can talk to them about that. Yeah, and come back. it would still separate front from backyard. Right. Yeah, right. I know they have. There's a hedge right proposed down that side. Down this line. Right. Yeah, down that side. Okay. You know, um, a planting hedge for yeah. privacy and mm -hmm. to delineate the properties. Right. Uh, which would look nice, and um, and we could talk to them about the placement of that pergola at that time and you know, revise the plan to reflect it. Because we also, I mean, when we look at fences, we consider fences kind of a structure too in the zero to fifty. So. I can see their point about um, you know a trellis being almost similar to that. And I would explain to the owners that um, you know there's there's two ways to go with um, mitigating for that that 250 patio increase, you know three to one with a variance or uh, yep. pulling it back. So those those are the two options. Two options, yeah. Right. So they should be we, aware. Right. Yeah. We have asked for the variance, by the way, in our yeah they have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, is that, is that good guidance? Well, I understand. It's, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to talk to them. I get, maybe yeah, we'll, we'll have we'll, to talk to them. I mean, they're inherited. You know, they just bought it, so it's yeah. it, it, it exists. It's beautiful lawn. It's everywhere. It's been there as as you said day, from day, day one. Day one, yeah. Yeah. You know, and we um, don't currently have it in our regulations to disallow that use, but it could be coming down the pipes. Um, when you're doing projects on um, an area that's been historically maintained in a certain way, once you kind of open up the, the can of worms yeah. to redo things, everything's looked at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we don't have it in there yet. It is an open shellfish area, and you know, 25, 30 years ago, people really weren't having those green lawns. So it is, you know, it's a new process. Mm -hmm. um, if we can find ways to make gains, we'd love to find ways. But we understand that we, um, it's somewhat of a grandfather situation. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's a lawn care. We talk to a lawn care company and maybe look at organic, the organic uh, type organic stuff yeah, out there. See if we can come up with a, an idea on, on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you. When do you want to continue to? Next uh, is the fifth of July. <laughs> will you be here? We will. Are you? Yeah, here. that's kind of. <laughs> are you? The Thursday. It's because Wednesday is the fourth. The fourth. Yeah. Exactly. We have so many filings we have to hear within 21 days. We I, have to hold them. I think we, if we can get in on the 5th, we should go for okay. it yeah, on our end, and, and we'll do the best we can to make sure we have it ready because the clock okay. is ticking as far as uh -huh. by the time we, yeah, we go through I this process into building. And now, that would be wonderful. What, um, <clears throat> when, when do you need, like, new plans by? Can I have it by next Thursday, please? Next Thursday, okay. <laughs> well, talk to no, me. No, no. Talk to me, like. The next meeting, that's okay with yeah, us, Yeah, talk. But, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We're well, going to put you on the agenda. This, if you need an extra day or so, let me know. I just yeah. get their packets ready <coughs> okay. at the time. That's yeah. all. Okay. That's that was fine. my fear. And then we're losing another two of us. Yeah. All right. So July 5th will be the next. Close, it seems. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Do thank we have you. A motion? Yeah. Yeah. Um, will we extend the uh, notice of intent for nine fiddles of landing to the July 5th meeting? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Guys. Have a good Thank day. you. Yeah. Thank you. Brad, you want to um, see what she's here for? Sure. Um, hi. Did you want to um, address the commission or just listening? I'm actually only here to listen. Unfortunately, it's the very last one. Well, we can it's change it. it. It's yeah. Chase Street. 24 Chase Street. I'm oh. Chase Fitzsimmons. I'm hi. the buyer's agent. Yes, hi. Okay. How are you? We're, we, uh, we can do that one right up. Yeah. It's very complicated. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, um, we're done with the hearing, so we oh, try okay. to take people as, so they don't have to sit for the rest of the meeting. Thank you. So it's a certificate of compliance yes. for 24 Chase Street. Let me get it together. Hold on one second. Hold on. So 24 Chase Street, you permitted. Um, it's a new house. Um, it was about a year ago at this time. And if you remember, it's, so it's on the river, but the house is way up by the street. Um, there was the river, and then there was buffer zone to river, and then you had this isolated wetland, and then you had the house. Um, so the, um, the house was outside the 50-foot buffer to, to the 
isolated vegetated wetland and pretty much almost outside the riverfront area, 200 foot riverfront area. Um, the only thing we know, the two, the two different things is as a no disturb zone, you had asked for a split rail fence. Instead of that, and I did a field change okay and I hope that's okay with you, they have two man stones spaced intermittently so and behind that is all natural um, so it's it's more than one person can go pick up and move they're purposely there I think it's more of a natural thing um, than than a split rail fence to delineate the no disturb zone so I recommend that 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 be okay and that we put that in the certificate of compliance that this is an ongoing condition to maintain that line of boulders if you will they actually also were instructed to put in seven I don't know the name of them. Shrubs. Yeah, seven shrubs. I actually have a picture of Oh, I think here. Nikki probably told, yeah, <coughs> Nikki probably mentioned that. And then the neighbor, um, we're going to deal with this separately. The neighbor has installed a fence along the property line. Um, we didn't know if it was this person's fence or the neighbor's. We, de we now know it is not, it is the neighbor's. So it is not their fault. Um, and it is in the buffer zone. So um, we'll, we'll address that. Um, neighbors were, you know, upset at the construction of this this house. Um, all, so, um, but it came out. I think it came out great. Um, you met all the other requirements, and I would recommend a certificate for to Chase Street. Okay. I just want to be certain this is not. There was one that um, has had some recent like nourishment of sand along. That that's okay. That that one we need to revisit at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Um, okay. Any questions on this one? <clears throat> you got a lot of certs, so I guess everybody gets a chance to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Move we approve the certificate of compliance for Chase Street, 24 Chase Street. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Not opposed. Please all okay. sign. Did you want to pick, did, are you going to be picking this up or we usually send it to the applicant's representative, um, usually the engineering company? Um, It'll be ready, if not tomorrow, by Friday. I can pick it up, but it's really easier. I don't know if you already have a plan in place for that. Why don't we just, just give it, it to listen okay. and know that it was coming. We'll send it to whoever requested it <coughs> and it should be ready by the end of the week, okay. by Friday. Super, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's do the certs. Um, then we got some other business to do. Oh, first, actually, we got to continue officially continue Strandway. Oh yeah, thought about that. Me too. And just <clears throat> yeah, Strandway. That's the one. Yeah, until July fifth. Okay. I'll move that we continue the hearing for 18 Strandway, post step stock and dredging for until July 5th. Second. Segment by Mark. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stay yes, around? Larry. Well, we're going to do <laughs> regulations. Come back next meeting. Yeah, I'll be in. Okay. Yeah, we'll be in. And the state land grant we got to do tonight. All right. Um, Go down the line, Michael and Marsha Walsh to Squantum Lane. Enlarge deck improvements and landscaping. I had Nikki go out and do the site visit. This was back in 2007. If you want to see the plan, you can. Um, it was essentially they installed um, inkberry, high bush blueberry, natives. So they asked to plant natives. This was good. And they had, um, excuse me one second, mitigation. They have a terraced landscaping wall, stone wall that was approved by the commission with lawn and plantings above it. She said the plantings are, well, clearly have been in for a very long time. And it looks like everything, all the 
retaining walls and everything were constructed according to plan. They have, um, instead of a traditional lawn on the ground, their lawn is up in the inside their retaining walls and everything seaward or towards the wetland of the retaining walls is natural, um, outside the 50. I usually try to make all of these, but there were too many. I sent Nikki on some. So she's recommending a certificate because it looks good. I recommend it. It's pretty sponsored. Okay. Anybody want to see the plans or just make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the certificate of compliance for Michael and Marshall Walls. Two, <coughs> six, one, two, one. Now second. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I did this next one. Um, Don Bates over at Seymour, AKA Punkhorn Road. Um, they did a beautiful job. It was reconstruction of a dwelling farther <coughs> away from the edge of, of Seymour Pond. Um, the only thing is there's one downspout that is not into a dry well and it's right at the 100 foot buffer zone line, but that check, there is no runoff <coughs> coming from that. Um, so I didn't think it was a, uh, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so technically it should be in the ground. It's at the 100 foot, but there is no runoff. I don't see the need to go back after all these years and, and do How it. How did they change the name of this? I a don't know. Because that means the deed and everything has to change, right? I think it's more, it's right kind of where Punkhorn Road and Seymour Road meet. So this address is technically 61 Punkhorn, but it's called, everyone calls it Seymour. Oh. But on the books, it's, this is Punkhorn. I don't know. I'd rather live on Seymour than Punkhorn. <laughs> yeah. Punkhorn's uh, a pretty cool place. Is it? Yeah, yeah. But they've kept, they have a little natural beach area. Everything behind the house is very naturalized. They're not using any sort of chemicals on their, they don't really have a and the Cape Cod lawn. They, they're not using anything down there. Um, I'd recommend a certificate for them. House is in the same, it's amazing. It's in the exact, where exactly it should be for once. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Decks, everything, exactly where they should be. Hmm. Well, I move we approve the uh, certificate of compliance for 61 Punkhorn Road, reconstructed dwelling. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded, sir? Which I did. Huh. Please sign. <coughs> uh, next is Eight Air Lane. It was um, <coughs> for reconstruction of a patio, slightly larger, but not in the zero to fifty. Um, and then some mitigation plantings. This was done in 2008. For some reason, like, we got a big mess of stuff from 2007 and 2008 that came she in. Called up, she called me. I guess we never came for a certificate of compliance. Oh. So I have to take care of that. Keep forgetting. Somebody's, okay. Oh, Nikki? Mm. Oh, she's going through. Hmm. Yeah, she said. She said she was going through. Yeah, I asked her to do that. I didn't know if she had time to be oh, doing no. it, but she's going was, through old orders. Yeah, and this was the day before we left to Spain. I said, I'll get it back. Oh, that's Back's good. That. But yeah, she's doing her job. Good job, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> yeah, she, she'll be watching when she does the minutes. <laughs> I recommend the certificate of compliance for Air Lane. All right, I move we approve the certificate of compliance for. Eight Air Lane to reconstruct patio and plantings. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. No opposed. Okay. Dermot Shea. This is an addition and a septic upgrade on Gilbert <coughs> Lane. Work has been done according to plan. We're recommending a certificate of compliance. The addition was 
outside the 50 foot buffer to the edge of the isolated wetland. Comments or just have a motion? I make a motion to um, issue a, a compliance, honorable compliance for Dermot Shea at 187 Gilbert Lane for an addition and septic upgrade. Second. Second. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Oh, we just saw this one. This was uh, Mark Russo, Salt River Lane. <coughs> this was, if you remember, he came in for an after the fact approval of the fiber roll array. So now that they have the approval to do the revetment slash fiber roll array, um, they want to close this out. So it's just a formality. So I'd recommend a certificate of compliance to close this off. I'll make a motion to uh, issue a certificate of compliance for Mark Russo, 5 Salt River Lane, and 5 Rolls. Second. Two seconds. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. For what class it, I, I recommend we're putting it off. We don't need to, it's not a hearing, so you don't need to formally continue it to the fifth. But it was a replacement of three buildings. And it was done about 10 years ago. And they don't, they were supposed to give an as built and they didn't. Uh -huh. um, and it's just, it's such a big project that when you, w and when it seems when you go out on site, there are a few changes. Um, yeah. So I think we really need that as built plan before we uh, even consider it. We did walk it. The property is, of course, beautiful. They maintain it very well. Um, but it's hard to tell if they're exactly right on with this big of a scope. So I'm just yep. recommending we put it off until they can give us an as-built. That makes sense. Uh, um, deck and staircase for the estate of Nathan Mowry on 108 Clearwater. Work was done in compliance and we recommend a certificate of compliance. I re um, I'll make a motion to uh, recommend a certificate of compliance for the estate of Nathan Lowry at 108 Clearwater Drive. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, cool. Last one. We did Chase Street. Can we do the land grant application in the minutes before we get into the regs? <coughs> sure. <coughs> so um, I'm going to speak to the land grant application, if that's OK. Um, Mark Robinson asked if you know I could do that. We <coughs> need to come here tonight for it. So this is for the Judah Eldridge property that um, town meeting supported the use of CPC funding for acquisition um, for it to get it. and. As we are a town entity, we are allowed to apply for a land grant, land acquisition, something, something. But it's ten. It's a state land grant up to about half, about half of the purchase price of the property. So the total cost of the project is um, roughly three hundred seventy-one thousand one hundred twenty-five. When you think about all the survey and other title work, not just the land. The, the acquisition of the land, but all the things that go into it. And this um, application would be for $192,985, or so roughly 52% of the purchase price of the property. Um, just to remind you, it is, uh, so the co commission supported the um, going forward to town meeting for the acquisition of this parcel. It is um, partially an endangered species habitat. It's partially in a zone two. It's in the Six Ponds um, Water Recharge or special spe Six Ponds Special District, and it abuts uh, Hawks Nest State Forest. So, your approval of this would just give us the go ahead to ask for this money to go after this money. Is 
And so would we hold the property as a property in the care of <coughs> the conservation That's right. Commission? Okay, so, and we would grant a conservation restriction to, to HCT. HCT to, and what would that be um, It's just double protection. Whenever you buy land for conservation purposes, somebody owns it and another entity um, will hold a restriction on it for double protection. They'll monitor it to make sure that we're keeping it as we should. Um, so vice versa, um, like at Cornelius Pond Woodlands, HCT is going to own it, but we're holding the restriction on that one, right. um, potentially. So it's just double protection. That's all. Yeah. So in this case, we, we would develop a management plan as opposed to HCT. But Cornelius... Um, Usually, um, with the town, honestly, the Compact of Conservation Trust puts together a... Um, we'll put together the conservation restriction, right. which you will then vote on. Right. To, um, so that's not yet. This is such a small issue because this this work that everyone does for this purpose is so fantastic, you know. But I I've really been thinking about that thing last. I know time the pond about restricting. There's no water here. Fish. I know <laughs> there's no water here, but but I'd like us to have an active role in development of management plans if it is in fact under our care and custody. Yeah. I, I just I worry about, you know, that the judgment of restricting certain activities like that. And in this case, there's no pond, so it's not going to happen here. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope I'm not reading too much into this. You know, I hope I'm not worrying too much. No, we will ultimately all the decisions are going to be ours. <coughs> this property. Yep. This is. The I'm still not here. recommending right. Um, this parcel, because it's far enough off Queen Anne Road, um, it's near Hawk's Nest, which people already go to, and there's kind of adequate parking along roads and sideways, um, byways there. I'm, I'm not recommending any sort of formal trailhead off this road. Um, there are already existing trail horse trails out there. I think that should just be stay, stay as it is. Yep. Um, but from a policing standpoint, and from just other access availability in the area, I don't think we need another trailhead off this, off Hawk's Nest Road um, to worry about for this one. But yep. people still can walk it. Okay. So I get, do you want to vote to support this? I would love for you to vote to support it, and I'd like you to sign it as well. Okay. Well, then I, I move that the Conservation Commission supports the <laughs> Proposal to purchase the Judah Eldridge property. Can I ask one question for you? Sure. In, in that third paragraph, it says we have the property under agreement and we can close on the land by next June, which is this month, I assume fiscal year 19 or June 2019. Mm -hmm. Is that properly worded? Is, given the letter is dated June 20th? That's next June. Yeah. That is next June. We're in FY18. FY19 starts July 1. Well, then you say or June 2019, FY20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hold on. i got to change that. That's yeah, okay. I'll we'll change that. that yeah. By next June. We just say June. This should say <coughs> FY18 or FY19. I'll, I'll vet that. I'll just circle it. You don't have I don't have to sign that page anyway, so. Okay. I'll, I'll clear that up. <coughs> no, no, no problems. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> All right, well, then, uh, just to finish up, I'll move that we support this proposal to purchase the two Elvis property for conservation purposes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, Brad, if you can sign this one sure. and get it back to me, that'd be great. And the rest of you, if you could sign, then print, please. Okay. <coughs> yeah, your names are all on there. Thank you.
Sides. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Is that signature page going around? Yep, here it is. You got yours, Brad, yeah, yeah. and then the other one still needs to go. Okay. I'll yeah. take that one Brad, back, Brad. Yep. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's a whole oh. stack. Let's send that down to Amy. Okay, for Amy. Thank you. So the minutes, too? Yeah, yeah, let's do the minutes, and then we'll talk about the box <coughs> and the regs. I've got just one set of minutes from March 7th. Yep. Right. Okay. And actually, if somebody mm -hmm. could make, I don't have a copy, mm -hmm. so if somebody could make edits make on sense. theirs, um, if there are any, and I'll take them. Thanks. Thank you. You're very patriotic today. What are we looking at? Minutes of March uh, seven the minutes. Please. You had an edit, Brad? What's that? Did you say you had an edit? Nope. I'm I'm not quite done. Oh, okay. But so Sorry. far so good. Spelling errors fixed. Huh? You need spelling yep. errors. Yep. On, um, if I don't have a copy, so oh, okay. you could just make circle it or something. Yep, I can do that and get it to you. That would be great. Annual mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Timer. I don't I made a hardwood, but I'm not a hardwood. What, what was it? What are you checking on social media about us? <laughs> thing I mentioned to you earlier. Oh. <laughs> it's quite an interesting stream of comments. Uh, I uh, I don't subscribe. I don't subscribe. <laughs> Once in a while, I, I check that page. But no, it was no, comments based on about us. a discussion we had in the Cornelius Pond property where there was some concern over the, the banning of fishing. fishing. Oh. And it, it prompted and I wasn't a whole here. series of comments on both sides of the issue. Yep. It wasn't all just... Uh, mm -hmm. But there was some concerns, and then people said, well, what's wrong with keeping it pristine? Mm -hmm. but, uh, it, it's something we should discuss at some point, I think. Maybe not tonight. <laughs> no, I'm going to get to the regs tonight. Education event for Fishing Migration Day at the West Reservoir. Oh yeah, you didn't hear about that? No, I didn't hear about it at all. Is that in these minutes? Oh yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was fun. It was a bunch of kids came out. I was supposed to go to that. Could you give this to you? It's the only thing. The annual thing was the only Thank you. Thing. Just the uh, one spelling error there? Yeah, that's all I saw. Got it. Cool. Okay. We'll fix the spelling mistake. Mm -hmm. Once a teacher, always a teacher. No, that's good. But I was bringing Jacob and the Beast to <laughs> Jacob and Jacqueline to Jiu Jitsu, Michael and I. And we, and we were doing mental math. Yeah. And she said, Grammy Paula, I want to do it. And I said, No, I'm the teacher. I'll do it. And she said, Under her breath, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Five years old. <laughs> Not anymore. I said to Michael, she just said that. <laughs> Is that also the child who gave your dog Snowflake yes. the name? <laughs> yes. That's her. Oh, that's funny. All right. How did everybody else feel about the minutes from March 7th? Uh, look at no me. comments. <clears throat> Look good to me. We need to vote. On we them? need a motion. Okay, a motion to approve the minutes for okay, uh, March seventh. Are you good, Carolyn? You always have a sharp eye on these I'm things. I'm good. Okay. Huh. I'll second. Right. Second. Mark second. Seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You choose. Do you want to talk about bogs first, or we want to go into the regs? It's up to you guys. Um, the regs, I feel, is a couple things we want to talk about. We've got fresh sets too. Buffer strip, but um, whatever you want to do. Um. We have, well, let's just do the box sure. real quick first. So, a couple people went out on the site visit the other day um, to the box, and we just walked all the way around and kind of made observations on the different areas. You know, saw the areas that were farmed more recently versus not. Um, saw an area that looked like it had like a fungus or a blight or something like that, um, which had died off. Um, you know, explain algae. the water algae, explain the water control, um, how we control water in the bog and and whatnot. So, as uh, talked about at the last meeting, I mean, your options are to if you wanted to put the lease, the request proposals back out to see if we as is. Um, to see if we got interested parties, um, to augment it slightly, or to augment it however the lease language, if you wanted the whole property as is to be leased, part of it, if you wanted to change the lease language, or if you wanted to pursue more of a naturalization um, avenue with the property. So. There you go. Let's see it. Jim and I were there. Um, John. Stan. Oh, you were there. Yep, you were there as well. And Stan, yep. Yeah. I have a comment. You know, I can't have a role to make a decision. But yes, you do. What? Yes, you could have a role. But <laughs> comments are good. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like the cake is everywhere, but particularly the cake is so intensively. You can think about cranberry farming in a lot of different ways, I suppose, but and the way it's normally practiced, it's not a good thing, I don't think, because it gets nitrogen and other bad stuff in, into the groundwater. Um, I would love to see that place just naturalized. Even, you know, Mark's proposal, which doesn't exist anymore, to organically farm it seems attractive. I think there's more stuff that can be allowed to just naturalize one way or another and revert to to um, more natural um, growth, I think, would be a good thing. There isn't enough area, there's still lots of area on the Cape getting some by development. And uh, you know, everywhere someone can find a house lot. to how it was 400 years ago, but... No, not, with, not without some help. If you want, well, I mean, that's... Time <coughs> either, so, but it would be nice to, uh, I think, to see that go back to a more natural state. 
I don't understand all the complexities of what would happen if it were allowed to, if it were turned into a pond or a lake, and what the trade-offs, I mean, more sort of acute concern for um, environmentally is, is the wastewater concern. Mm -hmm. and Maybe someone could enlighten me if anybody can about what the trade offs might be in terms of helping that uh, the nitrogen issues between mm -hmm. turning that thing into a pond or just letting it burn. Mm -hmm. it, Does anybody it, understand that? Well, it, it, it's not the same in any situation. It, it depends on each area individually because of the hydrology of the of each area such as Cold Brook versus this one are everything's a little different so um, but in general if you're dealing with nitrogen attenu want to do nitrogen attenuation capture of nitrogen in the watershed um, deep ponds are the way to go they fix they fix the nitrogen um, then you still have the phosphorus potential problem <laughs> um, which uh, is different but um, bigger ponds are the way to go. But how to create that if when you take, this is a still considered a wetland, so you'd be dredging a wetland in order to make that. And the exact science of it is, um, is case specific. So like for Cold Brook, we've been working for years um, with hydrologists, with Department of Ecological Restoration, with School of Marine Science and Technology over in Dartmouth to come up with a situation that's both going to naturalize over at Cold Brook, re, you know, reroute the stream, put in some ponds, um, things like that, um, which are hopefully going to be both good for both the nitrogen attenuation interests that the town has as well as the environmental protection interests that the trust and the town have. So in short, I mean, it's, it's, it's case specific for each. So. I mean, I've had Department of Ecological Restoration out to the site last year, or two years ago, had APCC, Associated Preserve Cape Cod, out to the site too. And they did cursory looks, but without funding and money, they, they can't. But that's not to say in the future we can't, pr if th that's the way the commission wants to go, is to look at something like that. Or if you want to see it, reverting it naturally, um, letting it naturally revert, some of it will be wetland, some of it will turn into upland. Um, that doesn't really do much for wet, wetlands do something for nitrogen attenuation, but not a lot. You really need a pond. Ponds are really what you need for that. If it turns into upland, mm -hmm. is it possible that it could be built on? Nope, it's, it's ours. Conservation. It's conservation. Yeah, it'll never be built on. <coughs> not unless you release it from your custody. It doesn't, to me, if, if our only um, purpose in, in trying to turn it into a pond is for nitrogen attenuation. It doesn't make sense, really. I mean, it does. It also provides habitat treatment. and other interests, Great. too, but, but you also have the West Reservoir right there. Yeah. I, I highly yeah. doubt anyone would recommend that the whole thing be turned into a pond. No, that's not the very, whole thing. Very unlikely. Maybe a, a small portion. Like, like what we're doing at Cold Brook is, um, <laughs> Cold Brook is 65 something acres. There's only a few acres of ponds pr proposed. Very small percentage. Yeah. Yeah. The natural river channel would be intersecting some of these ponds, whereas this is kind of a ditch that was created. To right, exactly. Fruit, so I don't know if it's I don't really know if there'd be a natural connection back down. Yeah, it, and I know that the folks that really practice, you know, highly naturalized restoration, they would view it as not a big target. And that's what they told me, essentially. DER said this isn't a big target. We, we could feel differently. It, it'd just be we wouldn't have that funding that, and that funding and that juggernaut of support. Expertise. Right. But, you know, we could do something similar. I almost like the idea of getting some expert opinions on options. And just, you know, yeah, we've talked, talked about, about that before. We have money now. We've talked about the BSC group having them look at it. Because um, that, um, we can do more. I, I, I did read through the report. Was that done by the BSC group? On the um, Bell's Neck Land? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they did. In have 2012, we hired them to do the um, yeah. land management plan for us, which that they did an excellent job it, of that. That was like a year long study that they did in 2012 for us. There's three different sections where they address. Uh, 
naturalization yeah. of the cranberry bonds. The reason I suggest them is because they, they've been on the site. They do recommend. They even came up with a price tag for it, which seems kind of arbitrary, but yeah. uh, which was fifty five thousand dollars for. But uh, that's a very arbitrary number, obviously. Yeah, um, it's long. Time. But they they did address it in three places. <laughs> they noted that while they were doing their study, they found a number of herring uh, fry in the in the channels. That caused them to recommend that it be uh, naturalized when the current lease was up at that time. That was a recommendation. Yeah, it's in uh, section five. What um, year was that? Twelve. Sections yeah. five and six in three different paragraphs. We, I wonder if that followed up our discussions over a couple of fish kills, or if that preceded. I'm not sure, but we had some issues around then. They just mentioned in that language that. Uh, the herring were found in there during their during their study. Well, you know, the bog, the cranberry farming option has like a window where there's yep. no further viability, and I don't know if we're there yet or not. But that's you know, if we let it naturalize on its own, which has happened throughout the Cape for decades, people just have abandoned bogs and they slowly grow back. Um, but five years down the road of that path, and you can't come back to cranberry bogs very right. easily. So, you, so you really at the turning point be, right now. Would be the uncertainty associated with continuing to seek to manage leases for cranberry farming. That is, what is the term of typical lease? It's five years or whatever. Usually I ten. Work. Okay, ten years. But then that's well that that would even be even a bigger concern because after ten years. Um, you've got another conservation commission um, having to deal with this, and you don't mm -hmm. know what that cons conservation commission is going to be thinking about this and what the result of those subsequent deliberations mm -hmm. would be. And my question would be, well, suppose this commission successfully put the bogs out for lease, how much further um, active management is required from the Conservation Commission than you once things are pleased? For example, if Mark mm -hmm. had a lease and he had a 10 year lease, is it totally hands off as far as the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. is concerned, or is this an ongoing um, management time sink for? Group. Uh, and is it I think more honestly, or less of a management time sink than, than just wanting to let it revert uh, or whatever goes along with that? Letting it revert, I think honest. I mean, there will be some time allotted to review of monitoring reports and what um, if, if we were to release it and checking the site on occasion and working with the grower to keep the herring out and do all that. I think honestly it would be less than having to go out there and manage that. Um, I'm not opposed to either. Does so. I just I'm just being honest. Um, there are you got to manage for invasives that crop up. You have to decide how you want it to revert. Do you want it? Um, you know, certain areas are strictly pitch pines. Do you want more diversity? Are you gonna? Are we gonna break up the peat mat? Or how how are we gonna do it? I, on, and how are we gonna manage water levels? Now that we still have ditches, so it's not gonna become a mosquito control problem. Um, I think there's going to, and it, whichever way the commission decides, I'm on board with. Um, but I do think that's more active management if you let it revert for us. Believe it or not. All those things are somebody else's problem if you lease them. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Another question is do you, how do you feel about what's happening at Bank Street? Because that's moving towards a multi-million dollar restoration plan, but right now, it's just reverting on its own. Yeah. And I personally think it looks fine. Like, I think it's beautiful. I, but I love the way it looks. And so, it does I, have it does have invasive you know <coughs> things you don't see? Is the management they have to do to that just to make it even look like that? Mm -hmm. It's a huge amount of work. Who's doing that? The Harwich Conservation Trust and Department of Ecological Restoration and. Eight, uh, volunteers, um, you know, just to treat the Phragmites that's coming in, um, to treat to to mow it all, all the time, um, the paths, 
they have a lot more um, to treat the honeysuckle and bittersweet and in um, y you don't realize how much work actually is going on there. Right. The ticks there are just absolutely oh, incredible. They really want to manage walking paths so they, they keep up with that. Yeah, that's, I shouldn't have mentioned that because that's not really a big deal, but the yeah, other... It is a walking path, but you come out of there and you head to toe ticks. I know. I was uh, I found I found many on Annie the other day. Oh yeah, well, oh, from after the other we box. were at Bell's Neck, oh. yeah. I, we used to bring CJ over across the street on Bank Street. It was <clears throat> yeah, but I mean they, I'm just saying they even though it looks like they're very hands off, they're actually they they do a lot more than you think right. to manage it and have it looking like that. If you look at older bogs that have reverted ages ago, it depends on how wet they are. If mm -hmm. they're upland. They, they go pine and to oak. Right. And they become forest and ha wildlife habitat and they look mm -hmm. great. If they're really wet, then invasives can come in. Um, yep. If you get a canopy, you can reduce the, the invasives. Yep. You can, there's some beautiful places that have, um, you know, maples that have come in. Mm -hmm. Over at Texera, Teixeira property, um, the bog, that old bog that borders that is a mature maple swamp. The Gorham bogs. Yep. Um, which are private, we held in back of Sackle, Tuckett Harbor. I've been very lucky to be able to walk them, so. Yeah, they're beautiful, but they, they manage them themselves and sometimes. There's a lot of invasives I, in there, though. Yeah, I think they cut too much, but the maples have done well. So I, I'm not, I don't mind just naturalization just occurring. I, I don't feel like we have to spend millions of dollars to restore it to a fully natural state, but I think you, you folks know that I do support that approach but I think you know we, we should discuss it and um, you know and we can decide what to do that's what we, what we need to do as a group I don't mind spending a little bit of money to frame options so we can have something to consider I know Mark you were a little concerned about that I think you, you probably felt like we don't what are we studying you know um, frankly yeah that's exactly right I mean to me to, to spend money on that you're throwing it out the window um, you've already done a study out there through BSE. There's a lot of information, and there's some holes in that information, too. And if you go through the entire Bell's Neck area and you look over the wetland uh, regulations, we've got more violations against us than anybody else in town. <laughs> so we probably ought to start by getting our own house in order. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good place to start. Right. The parking lot on uh, the Herring River? I mean, on the Herring Ladder? All the yeah. way around. Yeah. Well, that is all the, next, the way that around. Is on the docket for um, fixing the next year. Yeah. yeah. What, what are the violations? What, what do you see? What are the violations? What are the violations? Parking here? cars within a few oh. feet of the Herring Ladder. Right. Well, and not to mention the road base material that's been used to uh, to cover the roadway down in there, plus the asphalt base that goes down on Bell's Neck Road, plus the spillways that are pushed down in the marsh that's allowing the siltation, plus the siltation that goes back into the <laughs> reservoir in three locations on the east side coming down the hill. There's no provisions for anything to trap the water, slow the water, or clean the water and hold the silt out before it comes down. Well, and it goes on. Well, we should, at another time, probably get that plan, review that plan. I agree. And make a list of things we want to work on. For the, for the bogs, um, you know, it, it's, up, it's up to you folks. I, I felt a certain way for a long time. And, uh, you know, our options are to put it back out again. Our options are to, um, you know, pursue a, an aggressive approach for restoration or to uh, decide we want to let it naturalize on its own. <coughs> so. I almost think that, you know, we probably should regroup and, and have maybe some time to review that plan and then have a discussion that might lead towards a vote. Okay. Unless anybody feels strongly about putting that back out again to see if we can solicit more bids. Um, I, I, you probably know better than I do. I'm kind of concerned that there was no other bids. I mean, that, that tells me something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't disagree with that at all, yeah. Brad. I, I don't think you're going to get... Uh, a particularly good response by doing that again. Mm -hmm. um, I sent some information to Amy this morning. I'm hoping she'll forward it I to the rest of you. It. I didn't, yeah. um, <clears throat> but I'm thinking perhaps there's another option mm -hmm. and uh, another avenue to look at collectively. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, perhaps there's an opportunity to offer stewardship to a portion of it. Um, 
I haven't mapped out the specifics totally in my head, but I do have some thoughts. Uh, but there are other programs. Nantucket, in particular, has got. That's what you sent me. Um, I'm sorry. I said that's what you sent me. All the stuff on Nantucket. I yeah. will send it. I just okay. haven't had a chance yet. They they've got a, a project out there that's quite large, and it's been particularly successful. And it's bogs that have been reverted to um, organic growing, and it's been a very successful project. And it's also very much environmentally friendly. I think it's worth something taking a look at. Okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to go about the process, but uh, what came to mind was to look at an opportunity in stewardship and management of the property, not necessarily a bid or a lease, but to work in conjunction with the commission. Like I say, I don't have the, the specifics in my head. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of questions, probably more questions than answers. Yeah. Um, but I think it's worth, worth I, a discussion. I think it is worth it, too. I, I don't think that the recent history of leasing has really been great for the town of Harwich. And um, I don't think a lot has come back. And so thinking about it a different way might be good. Well, it's no secret the, the cranberry industry is not a particularly good investment. Right. Okay, and like I've said time and again, from my aspect, it's not—it's not about the money, because frankly, I don't need the money over there. I mean, I've already got a business. I've, that's not mm -hmm. my intent. Um, my mission was to to be able to take care of the bogs, manage it, and my goal was to not have it cost me anything. If I was at a break-even point, I'm going to say I won. Um, I'd like to work. <laughs> Everybody's got hobbies, yeah. you know, um, but the, uh, the manner of going about it, I think, is beneficial to the town. And I also think that there's a, an opportunity to instill some goodwill throughout the community, um, perhaps even an opportunity to... Uh, to encourage possibly some participation through FFA, uh, FH, FFA through the tech school. Um, the new school, as I understand, is going to have a little more emphasis on agriculture, yeah. from what I'm told. Um, and I think perhaps having that resource close by, maybe there's an opportunity yeah. to, uh, to utilize it in that aspect. Yeah. To what degree, I don't know. But I think there is a little bit of a crack in the door. Are you thinking cranberries or something different? No, cranberries. And it's not to say that you couldn't take part of that and change the use, mm -hmm. right. change the commodity. I think with cranberries, you, you've got a window where something would need to be done. And you don't have full consensus that that's the way to go on this commission. So it, it's a little bit of a challenge with cranberries. Well, yeah, there is. But the other issue is it's already there. Yeah. OK. And the, uh, from my perspective, the most valuable part of that bog complex is the one to the furthest north. It's the one that's got the, the most tree growth on it, woody growth. But it's also got the best um, selection of vines. And it wouldn't be all that difficult to keep that back in, uh, in good order. I think that would be the most productive part. Um, the two lower sections, there are places where it's still very well established. Um, where you folks have just gone over there recently, you'll notice the spotty weed growth mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing. What that does is really camouflage the spotted growth of the vines. If you get out there and you paw through it, or if you'd seen it four or five weeks ago, mm -hmm. before the, the weed growth, growth was as prevalent, you'd see the, the newer aspects of the vines coming through. Um, the opportunity to get it to fill in is there, but it would be a slow process. Um, the further south 
and to the outlet of the bog, the harder it's going to be. The easiest part is going to be from the pump house north in the most productive part. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to let the whole south side of that bog go and revert to something that's natural, as long as you manage the water flow, which you have to do mm -hmm. to maintain everything else, um, to get water to the m most northerly bog, that would have to be pumped up because that's the highest in elevation. Gravity will go all the way down through and do the rest of it. Um, but that's not a, you know, that's not that big a situation. Um, the it's uh, uh, upland bogs are harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, well, water doesn't go uphill by itself, right? right? Um, so there's an expense to that. But because of the makeup of the ground, you have more versatility as to what you can do with it and how you can work on it. You know, when you walk across the bog that's all peaked and everything underneath you moves, mm -hmm. you have to know that whatever type of equipment is on that bog, large or small, if it pokes through the vine growth, mm -hmm. it's gone. Wow. You're in the swamp. Yikes. It's not going to be pretty. Um, up on the other section where it's a hard bottom, you've got a lot more availability to be able to work and be stable and, and uh, let it recover itself. Um, well, I would say, Mark, to you know, get your thoughts, you know, summarized and, and give them to Amy, and then uh, you know, we should revisit this. And I'd encourage everyone else to really think about it because it's our responsibility to manage that property, and so doing nothing's not, you know, that's not on the list. You're absolutely correct yeah, with that. It's never even letting it go. It's not going to be a do nothing. Right. Can't do something. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 you know, I'm excited about the possibilities, but I think. You know, what do you think, Amy? So if we do we have enough information from the plan to that we don't have to ask BSC to do something different? I don't know, honestly. I need to I need to reread it myself. Yeah, me too. It's been a while. Yeah, they, 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 they mentioned um, basically uh, trying to recreate the stream um, from the present inflow to the present outflow. See, that's all artificial, though. I don't know. I, if that's I, I know it's, it's kind of a cursory plan to be it. Yeah, it's hard. To, yeah, because yeah, you're you're much <coughs> farther upland on that yeah. south side. Well, right. like I said, that yeah. that whole, as far as I'm concerned, that whole assessment is full of holes. Yeah. Um, that wasn't their main goal uh, um, for that for that document. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, the. But uh, yeah. The interest in a pond, I, I think, there's a property owner right there that really would like that. <laughs> we, we, we need professional, yeah, we, we, yeah, Ron. Right. But, uh, and, and it's an option. It's, it's definitely yeah. an option, but we would need professional guidance on that. And one. that's a lot of money. Because I, I don't, I have no, I can't tell you if that would work or not. I, I would think that groundwater would have to be really high and, you know, it, it would, could become a problem if it wasn't managed if it was a tiny little pond, I, right. could, I could see it just invasive, just loving the perimeter of that little pond. So, but I, you know, I, I think I have an open mind. I, I know what I prefer, but I think it's, it's also, it's our decision. So I would say do some homework if you can, and let's come back to this at, you know, a short meeting when we have a light agenda. It won't be next one. Yeah, within, within six months. I don't think we want to go too far on this. No, we'll keep it on. I'll keep it on all the agendas like I always do. Okay. Um, we'll just do it. At, but yeah, we'll, we'll maybe, I mean, I'd like to shoot for sooner rather than later. So maybe if people yeah. can, re I'll send the document. Um, I think I sent it to everybody, the, B the document on the land management plan. When would you have done that? in the past couple of days. I got to put you on my official oh, lift serve. Please. Sorry, I always I always add you. I know I need to add you to my the group here uh, on my computer. I had to go back 180 degrees in my thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, that when we voted last time, it was the Deeper into what was involved in doing that, we didn't have the opposite that's involved in naturalization. But as I get deeper into that, it's, it's very, there's a lot in there to do. And if 
do we want to obligate the town to to all that work, to that responsibility and work? Um, I liked the historical value, but I didn't take into fact that this particular bog is not visible. It's, it's, it's not going to be anything that will, it, it will be a destination that you have to go to as opposed to the Cranberry Bog on Bank Street, the Cranberry Bog on Great Western, that you go by it and you look and you see the little Christmas tree and you appreciate the crap. <laughs> um, so I, I think I would be open, certainly, to reading everything that comes our way, but I think right if the vote were taken tonight, I would say to let it naturalize by itself. I don't like the worry of any kind of chemicals, natural or, or otherwise, being used so close to the Herring River. I know the town of Falmouth has really gone in that direction with their leases. So there, there, there are other, there's some information in other towns that we can look at. Part of it is just the, the economics of growing right now. It's really hard to make it work. And they've had leases that haven't worked out well for the town of Falmouth. So um, yeah, I, I think we should all think about it and just realize that we have a responsibility here. If we're gonna part ways with you know, leasing for cranberry operations. But we all should think out of the box, and if there's some ideas on something different, then I'd be interested in that. I'd, I'd just like to, you know, find a chance to, you know, really make it conservation property and do something like that. It would help a number of different resources. So. Well, another thing too, Brad. You know, we, had, we talked about all kinds of aspects of it. You had mentioned fish hills and so forth, and there isn't anything, and I can't say this strong enough. There isn't anything about that property. It's totally unique. Sensitive, yes, but it's not unique. So is there any other oh. bog you know of that has a herring run in between the uh, inflow and outflow, the actual fish ladder? The, uh, and the, the change from salt water to fresh water. I think that could create, you know, confusion essentially in the uh, juvenile herring as they come back. Okay. That is a, a pretty unique situation, I think. Specifically? Yeah. I would say no, I don't. Yeah. I but don't I'm sure that. there is. There could and be, but I don't. I don't know. All either. of these aspects <clears throat> are manageable. Okay, and that's it's proven. It's done. It's done regularly. Um, if you wanted support, or if you want input, there's a lot of resources. The uh, University of Massachusetts has a tremendous amount of information regarding this. Uh, the Cape Cod Cranberry Growers Association, as versed as anybody you'll find anywhere. And I'm certain we could get some assistance through them and uh, perhaps some clarity. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think interactions with herring runs are common in the Cape with cranberry bogs. Mm -hmm. I think what I, and I've worked on this issue quite a bit with my day job, and what I find is it comes down to the diligence of the grower. Yep. If they really want to have good water control practice to keep the herring out, they can do it. Um, we have some bad apples that just keep having problems because they don't, they don't care enough about it. This site is, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's unique, but I think that junction so close to the exit of the fish ladder creates the potential for large numbers of downstream migrants to go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. and Herring River this year hit the, the largest count for herring run in Massachusetts. It was the biggest run in the state. And so 850,000 plus fish went through. Really big run, high potential to have fish go the wrong way. So that's why it, it's a concern for mine. The fish kills in the past were avoidable. They were not huge, but the potential for a big one is there at this site. Well, as long as the precaution is there, to, to do something in protection in multiple stages, yeah. I think you alleviate that risk. Yeah, you can. It can be done. It absolutely can be done, and it, it's done in many places. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we've worked really well with A.D. Makepeace, one of the biggest growers, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been great. They, mm -hmm. they realize that they can do a lot of things, but they're not supposed to kill fish, and so they don't want to kill fish. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, truth, truthfully, it comes down to the integrity of the individual or the group that's doing the work and the yeah. cooperation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not in their best interest to have that hassle, have that problem. Well, is that a, is that a good approach to look for a, a meeting 
you know, in the next three, four months that we Yeah, can, I mean, I'll we'll shoot for the second meeting in the next month. The second meeting in July will hopefully be lighter. Is that enough time for people to really come no. to the table with? <sighs> I think Mark made a good point there in the last meeting that the longer we wait for a vote, the um, more difficult, the, the worse condition the body is yep. in for cultivation. Well, this isn't brand new. This has gone on for a long time. In the, the three or six months now, doesn't make a damn bit of difference. The five years back, that's the problem. And we're never going to recover that. Yep. That time's gone. Right. Yeah, it, it, I think, you know. The economics five years ago were, were better than they were now, you know, for bogs or similar, anyways. I think there's. I think from a, a grower's perspective, I think there's two ways to look at at raising cranberries. You either go to grow a little bit and sell it privately under your own label, mm -hmm. or you sell a, a tremendous amount for pennies yeah. and hope you make some money. Mm -hmm. right. And I don't see that option being smart business. The, uh, the small scale, low key grower, I think, is reasonably viable. It's not a huge money maker. If you're depending on the money, probably not a good idea to do it. Okay. Well, maybe then not wait six months, maybe two, three. You know. Yeah, well, I'm at, I'm at hopefully we, in the second meeting in July, hopefully it will be lighter. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but hopefully. All right. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to move on to the regs? Yes. Actually, can we take a five minute break? Sure. Not quite five minutes later. Um, while I get up though, I did send you in your packets, and all your packets were the ones with the track changes on them. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants a copy, it's larger, it doesn't have, I accepted all the track changes. Okay. Um, this is how the document would, would read. Give us a call, please. Anybody else? Thank you. I'm going to take a quick break, too. Standing up is a good idea. Yeah. Nice to have a agenda like this, though. We can, so we can actually do that? Yeah, chat <laughs> Relatively easy compared to some of them. Fairly mm -hmm. <laughs> painless. <laughs> East. How old is he now? 13 weeks. Oh, wow. He's going to be a biggie. Don't they still try to get in? Yep. They flow in, they get stuck. Yeah. If nobody manages the, uh, the area, you have a potential for all kinds of things to go haywire with no correction. Yeah, it has if to it's be being, uh, Yeah, it does. It and with that comes a cost <clears throat> and the responsibility. If it stays active in agriculture, you're sharing that responsibility and defraying the cost of the town, which are two good aspects. You know, I mean, I'm, I understand your point completely. Yeah. Um, no, it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough call. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, I I personally think the the herring resource and the habitat is just too important to the town to uh, to justify you know the cranberries are kind of like a tradition they're, they're you know we all love cranberries and cranberry farming but it's not like vital to the future of the town as is you know water quality ecosystems what herring means to the f all the fisheries you know from striped bass to mm -hmm. whales to everything and I think there is the opportunity to make it a lot better than what cranberry farming is for all those things. Um, I'm not saying it's, there's not any any work involved with it, but mm -hmm. um, that, that's where I'm coming from on I, I think it's just for the future of the town, it's more important than just preserving a historical aspect. Of, it's just not, not... It's not just the town either, though. It's, it's the, the whole, whole marine fisheries are yeah. under <clears throat> great threat. Incredible pressure right now from development. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. developing, I mean, in that context, I don't want to make light of it, but yeah, I agree with you. Cranberries aren't that important. Mm -hmm. Just I mean, if that's really what it is, you know, trying to do a trade off. I mean, 
preserving tradition of cranberry farming, preserving marine fisheries. I don't, I don't think there's really much of an argument about that. All right. All right, you ready? On the regulations. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> So you want me to walk you through this a little? Go ahead, John. I sent you some. <coughs> editorial yes. Things, but I don't think they, they didn't. I'm sorry. I'm more than happy to go back through them, or you can you can bring them up. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know how we're going to do it. Sorry. How do you want to proceed, Amy? Because I was just going to. Um, so the main there, there was slight wording changes throughout basically grammatical or things that were redundant that were omitted and moved around so they made sense I thought or hopefully made sense a little more but the main changes are in section 1.04 <coughs> which is resource protection areas to the buffer zone no disturbed zone and buffer strip and there was substantial changes to lawns 1.06 so, well, let's just do, um, actually I did, let's see what else. I'll call people's attention to in the buffer zone, the, uh, the fifth paragraph down, this new language that is, is really, I think, pretty valuable. All right, so you're on page, what is page, on? Page four. Page of four of the new document, so right. 1.04. Is the section two? Yeah, sec section two buffer zone, fifth paragraph down, this new so language. Page. When siting a new building yes. or an addition to the 5100, a structure should be set at least 60 feet from the resource area. And so that's, you know, that's what came up earlier about, you know, is that vegetative buffer strip actually required? And I put this, I knew we were talking about this. I thought this was a way to do with that. To I, I think for new structures, I think it's a good idea. And I, I just like to add a little bit of language to that that says that um, you would add plantings with native plants in that, that area. In the Does that make vegetative sense? buffer strip or in? Well, if, if things are set back 60 feet, so what, what do we do in that 10 feet between the structure right. and the 50 foot line? I think it would be dependent on if it's like in the case of Bosky that we had tonight, yeah, so um, where it was an undeveloped, completely undeveloped lot, so you'd maintain it naturally versus maybe um, a lot that's been historically, maybe it's, you know, mm -hmm. much like the second one we had tonight, um, <coughs> the structure would be 60 feet back, but maybe they still have lawn there. So I think it would be kind of case specific. In my okay. mind, it would be case specific. Yeah. Um, I, I love it because I think it just kind of settles. Well, yeah. I think yeah. we have a 50 foot no disturb zone and all too often we get people going right up to that line and in times we have the structure at the 50 but t the temporary impact of the limit of work is within that. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is trying to accomplish. <coughs> you need a setback from the setback. Well, it's a, it's a no just disturb zone. Yeah. So it's almost impossible to build a house and we've had Here, people try no, exactly there, it's yeah. it's more for access <laughs> around you can make it smaller i just i threw in 60. i i like no. it i like it a lot i just wasn't sure if we wanted to say what should be done in that 10 feet um and maybe keep it case by case yeah. and it, it is solely for new buildings and additions so it's not like um you know that you're not going to insert that in somebody who's modifying their 5100 with different features it's really for buildings right for new new buildings. Yep. So I, I like it. Okay. I, I guess my point was there's language coming up a little bit later on, on the buffer zone. Yep. And I number four, and I wasn't sure if we were going to integrate those two um, with any dimensions. Yes. The buffer zone. Right. So I I had a little bit of language to did do you want to skip number three, then come right back to number three? We'll come back to no disturb zone. Yes, I, I purposely left um, it out of uh, vegetated buffer strip about how wide yep. you wanted it to be. You didn't want to do that? Okay. Well, I, I left it out. No, I think we should, but okay. I didn't know what you guys wanted, so I didn't put it in. One thing I thought we should spell out, the buffer zone is sometimes confused. You know, is it the zero to 50, is it the 50 to 100, or the zero to 100? 
I thought we might want to specify here the vegetated buffer strip along the 50 foot boundary between development activity and the no disturb zone shall be deemed necessary. But couldn't also vegetated buffer strip, like in the case of tonight with the one on Fiddler's Landing, mm -hmm. a vegetated buffer strip between the bulkhead and the lawn area. So it's not always, the vegetated yeah. buffer strip's not always at the 50 foot buffer. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a good example. So between the development activity. And I did, we did define buffer zone, like the whole buffer zone, mm -hmm. as the area within 100 feet landward of the boundary of a wetland. And then under no disturb zone, I defined the 50 foot no disturb. So people are a little more clear about that. But see what you want to do. So when doing the vegetated buffer strip language, I did keep it a vegetated buffer strip within the buffer zone between the developed activity and the protected resource shall be deemed ne necessary. But maybe we put in the, f maybe we put in buffer zone or a no disturbs or in the buffer zone language on the previous page. Um, in that paragraph that we were talking about that were the 60 foot Mm -hmm. Maybe you put, maybe you do put some language about a vegetated buffer strip in addition to the 50 foot there, if you wanted that. Or, or you differentiate it in the vegetated buffer strip. In most cases it would be plantings, but the, I see what you're saying. In some cases it wouldn't be, because there'd be already a natural cover there. A vegetated buffer strip within the buffer zone between the developed activity and the protected resource shall be deemed necessary where none presently exists to mitigate past, present, or future activity. We could also just say in the case under a vegetated buffer strip, in the case of an undeveloped lot, a proposal for a house on an undeveloped lot, the there shall be a buffer strip in addition to the 50 foot no disturb zone if you wanted to say something like that. Yeah, see that to me would exclude other cases though. But I would leave all that other language still in there that, that we have. That whole section still in, I would just add that line. You could say for this first paragraph, redevelopment within the buffer zone. For if you wish to redevelop within the buffer zone on a previously disturbed site, a, a vegetated buffer strip shall be necessary where none presently exists to mitigate past, present, or possible future impacts, as it says. And on a new lot, an undeveloped lot, um, where they propose to build pretty close to that area. You can just say it either is to remain natural or. If we don't say anything, doesn't that give us the discretion yeah. to decide where it will be? Mm -hmm. And since it's a case by case, <coughs> I think it does sense. Seems to me that's. That's fine. That's a more viable option. Finally. When it says. Um, between the development activity and the protected resource, could somebody twist that around to consider that it would be just from the resource area? Which is what we did today with Federal's Landing, but we also want to cover cases where it's no, it's, it's in the boundary of the 50. Could, somebody, right. could someone twist that around? Do you want to, instead of saying protected resource, do you want to say, um, between resources or the no disturb zone. I just want to make sure somebody can't twist that around. The two applications are to protect between the resource like today at Fiddles Landing or to put a strip along the 50 foot boundary. Those are really when it comes up. But this between the development activity and the protected resource. Yeah. Does it? Okay. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that somebody. I don't can think, I think so. I had a little bit of a hard time with the one today on, with the fact that they did um, a line of shrubs right at the 50 foot line, but they had a gap between that and the mitigation planting, even though it's a naturalized area. But in the future. 
I wouldn't consider, this is my, my thought, if you had a, going back to Fiddler's Landing, if you had, if they did what they said they might do, would do a vegetative buffer strip along the bulkhead, then had grass, and then said, okay, we're also going to put a line of 10 shrubs at the 50-foot buffer zone line to be a vegetative buffer strip, I don't see much value in that. So I just don't want it to be interpreted that way. I'm, o I'm okay with it as it is. Okay, um, so if you think it's covered and someone will say that that just applies to strips between the resource area, not, not just the zero to 50, but between the resource. Between the resource and the development. Within the buffer zone, between the developed activity and the protected resource, which is, that's where we want it. Yeah, it says within the buffer zone, okay. so that, as long as buffer zone is clearly defined. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. And That'll buffer work. zone is defined the page before as well as 50 foot is defined. Okay. So I guess my last question for everybody is then the last sentence has given dimension. Do you want to change that to an actual target width? And I, you know, we've, we've been. No we've, less than five feet. I'm, I'm almost thinking minimum of five and maybe a maximum of ten. Yeah. But I, do you want the max? I would say no less than five. Probably be unlimited on the maximum because situations could arise where okay, so it no makes less than sense. Five feet. Yep. We've often been pushing to get something and we might end up getting three feet or five feet. Yeah, right. And yeah. it's been a struggle. Okay. But I think it's really valuable because what I see is people eventually, if they don't have something there, some vegetation, then all There's of a sudden, yeah, they're, they're hanging out in the 40 feet from the resource area or 30 feet. Yeah. Then they're putting down sand or, you know, some. It's the gradual creep. Uh, I mean. Along uh, those same lines, I was going to bring up, um, I guess, a number of uh, towns require the putting in of uh, markers mm -hmm. at their no disturb zone, which seems kind of, I guess they're just like the typical concrete. Uh, down markers to have a little stamp that says, you know, yep. Howard Conservation Commission, do not disturb. Yeah. And they're put at, you know, 20 foot or 30 foot intervals. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, I, I'd never heard of that, but. We do. Permanent? Um, permanent, yeah. Oh, wow. permanent. Well, we've done, yeah. with not just the one at 24 Chase with the stones, but we've done a couple where we've done boulders every yeah. so often and put it in the conditions that yeah. that's to remain in perpetuity. These we've have the. That's the, you know, it would be so something that for p to tell people that this is actually what it is. It's not just like a landscaping right. feature. Yeah. Uh, and it, sh it shouldn't be in any landscape, so it shouldn't really <coughs> bother anybody that they're there because they're right. in the you know, but often na natural times area. It's you know. Between lawn and natural areas, where right. you find them. It'd be right at the <coughs> edge. Uh, but isn't that a structure? <laughs> it's out, it's at the 50, <laughs> just outside the 50. <laughs> um. <laughs> 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 They're no bigger than a fence post, but a fence post is a structure. I know. No, it'll be at, at the 50. Um, or maybe maybe on this side of the 50. <laughs> but I thought, you know, we talk a lot about the, the creep. Um, I thought that was an interesting way to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I think those are relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes you see, that's <clears throat> in the colonial days when they did boundaries, they used granite poles. Mm -hmm. Something like that, well, small granite. Yeah, a concrete might be a little cheaper. I mean, I think so little would be sticking up, it wouldn't really matter what it is, but. Um. Where's the boundary, where's the boundary? Yes, Pretty exactly, much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if there's just two or three, it's like something it that intentionally be there. every surveyor would see, every realtor would <coughs> right. see. We could, yeah. start with, we could start with some project that was pretty controversial because what was being proposed and then it became approved but you want to make sure that resource, you know, was not impacted. Maybe have it as a condition. Could we, could we say that the commission may, re, may require the, um, the installation of permanent markers. down markers? Mm -hmm. Put that in no disturb zone? We, uh, we could put that as a condition anytime we wanted to. I guess we could always do that. Yeah. In some places, yeah. you'd hate to put something down that you'd be tripping over. A, yeah. yeah. Um, but if sure. I could see if, like, you had salt marsh, or the, I don't view all resource areas the same. So there's yeah. certain, certain resource areas. It's like, okay, you really want to hold the line on that, right. and maybe if it's a condition, a project that had some back and forth, mm -hmm. that could be an order. A condition right. that comes in. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, good work on that. Do you want to, so let's go into no disturb zone then? Yeah, I know, I know, I like everything you did there, Amy. I have no comments there. Um, so this is the big, the big thing was going from, this is formalizing the two to one in the 50 to 100. Right. And the three to one in the zero to 50 <coughs> as a minimum. And you still don't have to, even if they provide that, you still don't have to grant the variance. Right. But that's a minimum to even. Um, and then on the, let's see, one, two, three, four, on the fifth paragraph down, so second paragraph up from the bottom, I did include if in fact, in fact, few, if any, activities will be allowed in the zone. For example, no new structures of any kind. I elaborated a little bit on that. Dwellings, pools, shed, fence, or patios. Decks. Statements, they say including but not limited to. Mm -hmm. Including but not limited to, that's a good. Mm -hmm. uh, a question yeah, I had good. on that, I just don't know, is um, so docks are exempt from that regulation? Well, any, a dock would be outside, would be in the water. Um, well, typically, they'd have at least some, a some part of it that connects in. Usually, a they, four by four landing um, we allow to connect. We can put that in part of water dependent structures. Well, I mean, almost any dock I've ever seen goes, uh, you know, 10 to 20 feet above uh, mean high water. Otherwise, it wouldn't yeah. um, work, you know. And so that's a new structure in the 50. I was wondering why they're not exempt necessarily. From, it would uh, have not just above mean high water. Um, okay. It could be from the mean high water wouldn't be the edge of resource. It would be edge of marsh, which there could be upper marsh. It could be top of coastal bank. It could be other resource areas, but I, I get your point. Um, how could we word, you know, a, a type of landing? Because <coughs> you have to have a landing to get out onto your dock. Mm -hmm. We we say walkways. You could have a four foot walkway with leading down to the water. But um, docks have historically been exempt from right. that regulation. Right. The, the origin is yes. the, the commercial mm -hmm. need for access to the water. Yeah. And so water yeah. dependent structures, it's it's kind it's of separate. It, um, yeah, it's yeah. separate. It's kind of outdated. Um, because the application is, is no longer for commercial use. What the what I've seen most recently with the docks the commission has approved is um, because we do have that four foot walkway width down to the water, they will if in the past allowed um, them to, you know, put their the footings um, to <coughs> the um, yeah. you know what I'm saying, the the ramp to get on, you know, be not Lar wider than the four feet, which would be the width of the path typically allowed down there. A lot of the ones that you've seen, like the one we saw at Fiddler's today, that that um, landing that they had that was larger than that, that was permitted that way, but that was a long, that was a while ago. <coughs> so if we want, if you want to clean that up, we can. Um, we can put yeah, that yeah. in docks and piers, or we can put it in. Probably well, makes more sense in docks and piers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you could just you mean grant the variant. You grant That's variance what, for yeah. that. Yeah, I'm wondering if if docks should be listed there, and then we can always grant the variance whenever it makes sense, because um, it seems like we struggle a little bit to. Uh, there's a lot of arguments against yeah. the bylaws in place, and mm -hmm. that would be you know one that's uh, very clear and. Um, they would they would just simply be asking for a variance because it's a bettering the resource somehow or you know it's an keeping, improve, yeah, improvement yeah keeping people channelized yeah. Uh, but there's no other arguments there's not like oh there is shellfish is not it's not going to hurt the salt marsh it's mm -hmm. just a simple um, mm -hmm. simple uh, but, uh, yeah I think you you really want to keep the dock language with the water dependent structures yeah it's just very traditional. I could just say a landing, so if we go water dependent structures, and it would be under both tidal and fresh water. Um, but I'll put it, I'll just make a note. Um, a landing for the dock. Landward. 
of edge of resource. What, what's the purpose of that point in that paragraph? What, what are you trying to say? I'm just, uh, maybe I don't need to. Is that what you're saying? I thought you were well, saying I needed to put, make some, there's some language well, for a landing that would be allowed in the zero to 50 to get to a docker pier. I think you keep that language to the water dependent structures. Seems to me that promotes an argument. Are you given it's an example? Are you given an example, Jimmy? You think of a given example of stuff that could be permitted? Is that? Yeah, well, there's. Um, I'm not reading the right paragraph right at the, this moment, but there, Amy listed all the things that are. Oh, that in been, the no disturb zone. In the no disturb zone. That are. Um, it basically says that there will be no new structures in the no disturb zone, but docks appear to be uh, historically exempt from that. That, that limitation. <clears throat> well, it says, in fact, few, if any, activities would be allowed. And then it gives examples of structures that would not be allowed. It says no new structures of any kind. Right. And then I like the language Carolyn had, um, including but not limited to. <clears throat> you can. I guess uh, as written, you could argue that uh, docks would be prohibited. I can see the confusion. You know, it's. Um, In the water dependent structures, um, under definitions, we don't define that item. The that land. Part of the structure. Yeah, the land. The stationary land. But sometimes, um, sometimes it's just the deck. It, sometimes there's not a, that's, that's, a big thing. Yeah. It's, it's just the dock itself, but it just it's kind it, of it's not. Yeah. We didn't really define pier. It really is part of the pier. The dock and float are past mean are past mean high right, water, but really the, the pier, pier yeah. is above that. Right. Yeah, the part you walk on that's elevated. The decking. Is the just the <coughs> surface the deck is the walk on? Mm -hmm. well, I just wasn't sure how, how that had been interpreted. I think I probably should because um, we define other things. I probably should and I define float and deck and gangway. And we really don't define dock and pier. No. Do you want to just put something like not notwithstanding um, water dependent structures? No, it's under fresh water. Where you could dock you. No, yeah, dock and pier. I'll put say those back provide over. for elsewhere in these regulations. Yeah, yeah. That's. I think that it, it's almost for us it, it, to clarify because a, a new member could read this and say, "Wait, what about docks?" And, and yeah. so I think it, it's not that clear. Yeah, I wasn't really sure about it. Yeah. So, in the, so what you're yes. suggesting is under the no disturb zone. Say, for example, no new structures of any kind including but not limited to dwellings, pools, sheds, fences, patios will be permitted unless provided for elsewhere in the regu these regulations. And then you go to the, the water to sure. structures and it'll Unless cover. provided, yep, that's fine. I think that's pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like keeping it simple. Um, the, the definition of a deck under fresh water is defined under the definition of the deck under I didn't, honestly, I didn't look at those, so. Um, but we can clean it up. The two definitions are different, I think. Deck under uh, Title I is, is the surface of a water dependent structure designed as the walkway for persons using the same. Yeah, and under uh, fresh water, it's structures designed for use on inland bands of bordering vegetated wetlands. So it's a platform for launch kayaks, canoes, etc. Is there a reason to have separate sections for fresh water? What do we call them? Salt Tidal title. waters, uh, water dependent structures, rather than having one section with one set of definitions that apply to both and subsections for metal waters and 
I have to think about that. It, different resource areas are pretty distinct. Eelgrass, shellfish, salt marsh. Salt marsh. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's um, those are the big yeah, things. Yeah, because you have to be, uh, for a tidal dock, you have to be a certain distance above the salt marsh, but for a freshwater dock, you don't. There's no there's no salt marsh. It pretty much is right on the water surface. I'm just thinking yeah. of the confusion of having two sets of definitions that unless... We can make some very similar, right. But if they're... I think the nature of those resources are salt. very different. And, mm -hmm. that's, and the impacts that occur are very different. Right. And I think the Wetlands Protection Act really drives that and so on. Our rates connect with that. Yeah, yeah I like having the definitions in the same section as the uh, requirements. Like it is. Yeah, yeah. but I'll, <coughs> I can look at the two different, because the definition for deck shouldn't be different for one no, versus the other. Um, and you should so probably add dock. I'm to going the to dock and pier. Yeah. I'm going to add that, yeah. those two. I've got a minor comment on lawns. When if we get to that, are we done with? Uh, so we're done. Are we good with buffer zone and no disturb zone? I have and one more on the uh, mm -hmm. on no disturb zone on section two towards the bottom of the page, yeah. where it gets into the, the what <coughs> mitigation is. It says uh, mitigation may be in the form of native plantings, the seeding of shellfish, or other commission approved mitigation. Um, where are you again? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the bottom of page four. Um, oh, different for me. Yeah, sorry. Top no. page five for that one, I think. Okay. Well, I feel like that leaves the definition of mitigation pretty open-ended. And, um, you know, to me, mitigation is like, all right, we're taking a 1,000 square feet of lawn and uh, converting it to native plantings. So that's like a, an example of mitigation. Um, you know what they what they offered on the Seymour Pond parcel is kind of borderline where it's like a mm -hmm. it's a, it's a natural area mm -hmm. and they put some additional plantings there but was, or, you know that's right. not really right. mitigation right. if you're just looking at the definition in the dictionary. Um, that's more minimization as much as you can on that one. Right. That's what they should do. Right. Um, and then the, it's, I think if like a if this was in court or something and someone argued that. You know that they, they wanted to mitigate with the seeding of shellfish. Um, it seems like mitigation may be in the form of the seeding of shellfish. Uh, that says, you know, it says that. I mean, I know that's uh, we've applied that forever. Yeah, I, w I just wonder if the language should be mitigation um, must <coughs> must be approved by the commission and may be in the form. The in the form of this or that, because this kind of says that it may be in the form of the seeding of shell shellfish, and that's how we interpret that oh, law. That. Oh, okay. um, so which in some in some cases, you know, putting some coax right. seed in the water does here. not mitigate no, what, it, what they're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. We've done it over and over again. And yeah. it's, it's, I've always tried to favor habitat over seeding. But we've done it a lot, so I, we can't hide from I, that. I, I'm not saying uh, necessarily taking the term the seeding of shellfish out, but just maybe adding mitigation uh, must meet the commission's approval and may be in the form of. How about flipping that sentence? I around? did say, I don't know if it's in that one, or other commission approved mitigation. Yeah, but that, um, that leaves, uh, to me, I interpret that as it may be these different things. I think Jim but wants it, to flip that sentence around and have. Okay. But it, 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 it uh, is not must be. It's, well, it's Jim, maybe. are you questioning <coughs> what the mitigation is, or are you questioning who shall propose the mitigation? I think <coughs> what he, let me see if I can understand. Somebody could choose to use seeding of selfish in instead of putting in native plantings when the shellfish is not even in their realm of right. that. Is that what you're talking about? No. Right. So, so who chooses the yeah. method of mitigation? Yes. I, I think that's it's clearly the commission. Yeah. Okay. Actually, if this is in the no disturb zone, 
the seating of shellfish shouldn't be in there. Well, that, I was kind of well, worried that's of, the, of the that. Question. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So if it's in the zero to 50 foot buffer, the seating of shellfish <laughs> shouldn't be in there. That really should be docks and docks and piers yeah. Yeah. for tidal waters. Okay. I understand what you meant by putting that in there. I got gotcha you. nothing now. to do well, with Well, that was just, yeah. that was in there, honestly. I didn't, I didn't, that was, I think, yeah. in from the beginning. Yeah. Or has been in for quite a while, I don't know. <clears throat> I to I'll put, put under tidal waters yeah. another <laughs> definition for right. sh shellfish mitigation. Can we do that? <coughs> Sorry, uh, I mean, I didn't hear that. Oh. Um, under definitions for tidal waters, I'll put a definition for shellfish mitigation. Okay. Basically say if the commission permits a new dock in a state mapped well, that doesn't even happen. If, a permission, if the Conservation Commission permits a new dock, shellfish mitigation shall be required. Um, so that's not the shellfish mitigation. Well, I'll do the definition too, sorry. Mitigation would be um, the addition of juvenile shellfish to offset negative impacts to the benthic environment as a result of a new dock or something like that. Uh, I, I'll think that I'm just okay. thinking off the top of my yeah, head, no, but, but I, I yeah, because we could also require salt marsh restoration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to define mm -hmm. shellfish mitigation yeah, so people uh, knew what it was. I sure. wasn't. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. I'll think about that. Move on. Somewhere in there, mitigation such as shellfish seeding. Including but not limited to selfish seeding, salt marsh. Gotcha. <coughs> I like those words. Okay. Okay. Um, we ready to go on to lawns? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had something for the second sentence, which. Yeah, one second. What's second? Oh, second paragraph, I guess it's one, one sentence. Oh, six. Lawns. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not thrilled with that sentence as it just stands there alone. Uh, That's fine. And so what I thought was adding something to it, and what I had was lawn fertilization is of concern because of possible overuse, and although the effect of a single house lot is difficult to quantify, I got rid of extremely, the cumulative impact to resource areas is a source of nutrient loading that should be minimized. You're, sorry, and although the effect from a single house lot is difficult to quantify, comma, comma, the cumulative impact to resource areas is a source of nutrient loading. Oh, wait Hold on. The, the cumulative impact, impact to resource areas to resource. is an impact uh, of nutrient loading that should be minimized. Okay, cumulative impact to resource areas should be minimized. Um, the cumulative impact of nutrient loading to resource areas should be minimized. Does that work? Mm hmm. As Aren't it, you repeating it in the following paragraph? Let's see. Yeah, you're right. I guess that sense as it was, it just, it kind of just stops with extremely difficult to quantify. We can and cut that whole sentence out if you want. Because we say turf lawns may be a significant source of nutrients to wetland, like above. That just was a sentence from old regulations. Right. We can just cut that off. Just get rid of it. Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the whole question, you know. It's all addressed somewhere else. Lawn fertilization contributes to nutrient loading. And if that's the yeah, it says that the paragraph above. Okay, good. Yeah, get rid of that sense. That's okay. Everything else I, I like there. I did um, keep in for now. You can change it if you want. One, um, the second bullet, one-time slow release organic fertilization may be allowed on a case-by-case -case basis by the commission to help establish grasses or native plantings. Um, that's, so you can take that or leave it if you like. It just gives you a little bit of flexibility. I know Rob liked that. This 
um, in the second paragraph, so going up a bit in the second paragraph, what did change is previously we said no turf lawns in the 50. Mm -hmm. This is now no turf lawns in the 100. Right, that's good. On an undeveloped lot. And on lots where turf lawn currently exists and has for a long period of time, the commission may require that turf lawn area to be reduced or eliminated when an application for new project on that lot is brought before them. That's new language. I think that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Our focus has always been on nitrogen and phosphorus, depending on the water source, but we don't permit pesticides. The reason for that? Just chemical application in general, that close. That's a typical commission. Um, no pesticides, herbicides, rodenticides, fertilizers is like a typical condition that most commissions have. And it's just preventative of chemical application that close to a water resource. You can, if you can grant a variance from it, it's still, they could ask to do it. Some of those ever are very poisonous to uh, marine life, right? So if you're near water resources, you're putting herbicides down. And the dogs. <laughs> and the people. Yeah, I'm just saying, they're, they're, you, you're right, they're very toxic. They can be very toxic. I'd say um, most commissions I agree with you. are the same, nothing in the zero to 50. I've never seen. And then what the commissions do in the 50 to 100 varies a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I've just got one more comment, Amy, that's it, because um, I've given my comments already. <coughs> so I don't know how other folks are. Um, um, I've been through it quite a bit. I had one question, on, one more question on lawns. Mm -hmm. um, I had a bullet that irrigation should be minimized. Do you want any conditions other than, like, do you want to, I know we have different opinions on oh. this. No new irrigation in the zero to 50, or do you want a temporary above ground irrigation to establish? There is some validation to having some irrigation in order to get things to grow, in order to take up nutrients, but it also can make it easier for people to fertilize if you have an irrigation system too. Do so. we say in ground no in ground irrigation the zero to fifty? No, nope. because we've. I don't think I did. We've applied I, that ever since I've been here, so I, I think um, that well, we were rethinking that. I thought. Yeah, I, we've I, applied it, but we've, we've never had the right, regulation. I'm trying to think of any case you'd want that. Well. Can help me understand on the top of the a coastal bank or something like that. Because where of it's, well, or very exposed, very sunny, windy. For, for we're talking about for temporary only or for permanent? It could be either. It's in ground, that's permanent. Either. In okay. ground, sorry, I thought you meant temporary too. We allow temporary. What kind of plantings would you think you would need that for that type of habitat? You wouldn't want lawn in that type of habitat. No, you shouldn't. It no. mostly is like a very barren kind of mm -hmm. coastal heathland habitat where it's just dry and you get different a different plant community up there but a lot of people do have lawn up there that may be converted yeah how do you how do you want to deal with i i want it, it no permanent irrigation in the zero to 50. or well, rain ground um no that's what i meant yeah no in ground in the zero to 50. Unless the temporary drip is all right. Temporary drip is fine. Plants. We typically do that. Yeah. Or so even temporary um, sprinklers. Yeah. 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 Doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, we have It can be considered on a case. We could put something it shall be case considered on case. a case by case basis. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're allowing some to have one, but you don't allow them to have irrigation, there are those cases, right? Right. And that's going to happen. There's a problem if they're. You know, if there's a dry season, the lawn dies, then they'll run off. Get a problem. But we're not allowing any turf lawn in the zero to 50, any new turf lawn. So it's. I think a presumption is if you allow irrigation, it's going to promote fertilization. Is that right? That's a big part of it. That, that's what you know, the landscaping industry does. You know, it, um, I'm just trying to think of any exceptions that make sense to that. And I so, so the justification for not allowing in-ground irrigation 
is that it promotes bad behavior. It's not because there's something inherently wrong. Well, it does, it does, right, it promotes bad behavior, not just the nutrient loading, but people, you know, you see all the time, people's systems going off when it's, when it's raining, you know, not having proper sensors, not timing things well, you know, things overwatering and runoff, right, promotes bad behavior, all, all kinds of bad behavior. And, um, Two years ago, was a, several of us each took a town and, and asked Paul, the yep. uh, conservation commission and uh, administrator, and asked, "Do you have, in, do you allow in-ground irrigation in zero to fifty? And nobody did. Yeah. One of the examples Orleans gave me was that occasionally, <coughs> occasionally, but. Uh, a head will be directed at the wrong way and will be pouring right over the bank, the coastal bank, and cause erosion. Mm -hmm. Also, at zero to fifty, it's a no disturbed zone, and so you know what? Right. What, what would we allow that would? Um, you know, cause it should be for new, yeah. So it do right no. <laughs> Because right now, this would be no permanent under, there's a lot of existing ones, so. Yeah, if there would existing. it be for no new application, right. you know. We're not telling people to pull it up if right. they have a new application for something in the zero to 50. If they, they're somewhat grandfathered. And it's the same with 50 to 100, but if it's new development, um, I can't think of a single case we've allowed it in you know, nine years, whatever it's been. It's, it's really something. Well, yeah, certainly wouldn't be allowed in the 50. I guess the question would be, is that, is that the extent of 100? But, um, That's case, been case by case. For, for a new one? Yeah. So we're not allowing any new lawns in the 100, right? Yeah. So. At turf lawns, right? Right. It could be right. seeded. Yeah. In, in some cases, you've got a highly developed 50 to 100, you know, like a, mm -hmm. of a bulkhead on a, you know, right. witch van, something like that. There's no real harm to having an irrigation mm -hmm. system in, in that. Yeah. Or we're talking a new. New, no. yeah, I'll put like yeah. um, on a lot where <laughs> there previously wasn't any. Yep. All right. <laughs> what else you got for me, Brad? You said you had something else. The only I have is like I couldn't find a language on the um, dock storage. Remember, oh. Remember I gave yes, you that? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I couldn't find that. And that's, I, I, I thought I did. Right. Hang on one second. Let me do the dock storage one first. And that would be for both. Um, so you just want I, I under standards and requirements another number saying off-season storage of the structure shall yep. be outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Well, I sent you language. And I think we actually we okay. voted on it. Remember that that meeting? Well, number 10 is, talks about off-season storage. Yeah, I'm finding it. It says off-season storage should not be allowed in any wetland resource area. That's under the freshwater one. I'm looking at title right now. So, review and approval. We had, I, I wrote specific two sentences. I'm sorry, yeah, you did. Um, I have it. I just didn't. Yeah, I'm just going to put Brad's in. comments. Yeah, we, and you did vote on it. I've we vetted it. it was pretty simple. I had a lot of comments. All proposed structures shall be seasonal, but appear cannot be appear as a proposed structure. Piling, uh, right? So but we they um, can't bring it in. That's the decking. They bring the float the in, right? Right. It would be nice. That really is mostly for fresh water. It shouldn't be under title. Oh. We should just say off season storage. Oh, the storage. Yeah. Well, no, the the decking. Right. Floats in both waters are. Right. I understand, but I'm saying you're saying the. The decking on the piers doesn't come out in in salt water, so Neither how can that? The pier. Right. Hmm. Neither does the pier. Right. So. Neither of the pilings nor the decking comes out. No. So on tidal waters. Right. 
really say all proposed structures. Right. I'm going to I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that out. Float shall be removed seasonally. Six months max maximum use. And did we, Brad, did you want to include this in number eight? Where we're talking about surveys for species of shellfish, did you want to include a requirement for soft shell? Uh, oh, densities? No, soft shell. Um, clams. Oh. It says clams, quahogs, scallops, oh, mussels, but clams are clams soft shell. Num number eight, let's see. Yeah. So, you say soft shell clams? Yeah, th that's what that clams implies. If, um, it, it, it's probably say. more accurate to say soft shell. Okay. Yeah. We talked about having some type of quantitative criteria for shellfish surveys as to what would be significant. We're not ready to do that tonight. We, no. I, I've done research and seen what other towns have, and it's it's very, it's pretty informal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, I love the idea of finalizing what we have here tonight, and then we can revisit this anytime. You know, if we have new things like that, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like more detail of the shellfish surveys, but it, yeah. it's location. Exact to the location being disturbed. Right. Yeah. And they one missed soft shell clams yeah. that were pretty hard to miss. Yeah. So yeah, no, we I would like more definition, but I think yeah. that's one of those tasks we gotta do a little more research on. Yeah. So you wanna add soft shell I'm going in to. addition to the clams? Yeah, just add soft shell to that and that's that covers that. How about so for the talk about the seasonality? So going back to number ten. Uh, on top of Brad's comments there about storage, mm -hmm. float shall be removed seasonally, um, six months maximum use. Um, pi and then skipping down, pilings and decking may be permanent with approval of the Conservation Commission. That's what we allow now is permanent. Instead of stub piles, a lot of times you allow permanent pilings so you don't have the reintroduction of stuff every year. Yep. And a lot of times the decking that's above the marsh stays. Yep. Fine? Yep. That's the way it is. So I'll make these changes. Um, you don't have to, if you want to see them one more time, because there's a few. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to vote on this tonight. What I'll do is I'll take this edition, because this is what I made the markups on, so you don't see all the mark other markups. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll look at your comments, John, for the yeah, little things. things I'll look at that. Things. Thank you. Do, do, and I'll do make track changes on that. Do you want to approve? these with these pending changes do you want to go ahead and prove it or what do you think Amy? it would be so i put an effective date of july 1. okay okay and so so do you want to see them one more time with this one having track changes or do you want to i'll do the changes i'll i'm, if you're I'm good okay with me doing it. it i would say we either vote tonight or we vote in the fifth just to make sure we do it because mm -hmm. I, I we really need to get a couple of these things finalized but if you want to get it effective for, for the first you, you could, well, you could make it effective farther out if you wanted to, but I just assume get it effective as soon as we can. Yeah. And that would be the beginning of the new fiscal year, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have to check and make sure that that's an adequate t enough time for comment. Okay. On them, but I'd like to do the first of the year. Okay. All right, then we'll take is a look there, one more time. Is there a public comment period when you're? Well, we, this is a publicly, I mean, we advertised for this on the agenda. Nobody showed up, I, but I think that there is technically a comment period. Okay. I'll check that, though. Nice work, Amy. Thank that you. Was, that, that's a long yeah. time coming. Nice. Yeah. 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 A lot, long time. I understood work. it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of improvements. Some of that yeah. language was, you know, wasn't the best before. I'm sure of that. ING. Irrigation. All right. Irrigating. Oh, gotcha. Another long day. Are you done? I understand. I think so. Anything else you want to talk about? I'm done. Irrigate me. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I'll make a move where we move where we uh, adjourn. I'll Is second. <laughs> First, any anything else, Amy? Did you? Sorry, did you move to approve this? I no. I no, hold it one meeting. more time. I guess we'll we'll hold it one more time, but then absolutely, let's. Okay. We're okay. Vote sorry, on. I just wasn't listening. Yeah, on the fifth, we're going to vote on. All right. Absolutely. All right. And
we're done, right? Yes. All those in favor?